floating on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that reprograms stupidity satnav. After 400 yards, turn right, and then you have reached your destination. Thank you for joining me once again for a Monday night debate. So we've actually got a flower who has turned up and managed to connect. I've got Zoom and... and uh, Skype and everything sorted so we can actually have people here. Um, with me, as always, is my partner in crime, my Robin to my Batman, the uh, epic Lloyd to my nice Peter Team Skeptic. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Ready for another another dipshit who thinks he's fucking figured out more than the entire body of science. But yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, with that, straight on to it. We have with us um, a, a guy called Jordy. Uh, Jordy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us. I know um, in Australia it's very early in the morning, so I do appreciate you um, taking the time to come and have a chat with me. How are you doing? Good, thanks. No problem, man. Um, thanks for having me on. No worries. So, simple question is, why do you think the Earth's flat? Um, I mean... There's quite a bit of evidence that I've come across, but the main one is the curvature. So I know we can see things that would be hidden under curvature following that R and just per mile square, which uh, I understand sorry, you, you, is you, correct you, up to 1,000 um, miles. Yeah, sorry, you were just cutting out a little bit there. Um, would, you, would you mind just saying that again? The... So eight inches per... Eight inches um, squared per mile. Right. So is is that a correct is that correct to calculate the curvature? No, not really. Um, do, do you know what that is? Uh, that that actual equation. Do you know what um, something to the squared of itself? Do you know what kind of equation that would be? No. Uh, it's called a parabolic equation. All right. It's uh, it's in math yep. when you have a single function like that, it's impossible for it to come back on itself. Right. So it simply doesn't form a circle. Yeah. Um, now, for uh, if you were to use eight inches per mile squared as to the amount of drop that should be over a short distance, you know, 500 to 1,000 miles at the most, it can be almost accurate, but it gets progressively less and less accurate as you go because it, it's not the equation to calculate the curvature of the Earth. Um, the, the, there's, a, there's a very simple equation that, that, that you can use for it, which is h equals r times 1 m minus cos a, um, which is some basic trigonometry, which would work for uh, a sphere of any size and would always give you the correct amount of hidden drop that you would expect. Yep, I understand that. Um, the, I, I've seen some sources saying that it's correct for up to 3,000 miles. No, uh, it, a thousand miles is, is a push. Um, and obviously it gets exponentially less accurate uh, the, the further that you go. Um, up to a few hundred miles, it's going to be pretty much accurate. Not not a hundred percent spot on, but it's going to be, you know, a, a pretty good approximation. But it does get, the further you go, it exponentially becomes less accurate. Yep, yep, got that. Um all right, so my question is, is I understand um, that there is, a, there is an equation for light refraction or something like that. So these photos that should be hidden under curvature when you zoom in can be explained by light reflecting it up or something. Is that correct? Atmospheric refraction is certainly something that happens. Um, re refraction happens when light goes through a different density of medium or different temperature of medium. Um, and it, it would it would happen on a flat Earth or on a spherical Earth, but the the maths behind it um, works um, on on the spherical Earth because the atmosphere is curved. So you need to take things like that into account. Um, I spoke to one of the world's leading, well, probably the world's leading expert in refraction, a guy called Dr. Andrew Young, who actually created an entire web page of what refraction would look like on a flat Earth. 
And the, the calculations are a lot simpler for um, a flat earth compared to a curved earth because you don't have to take into account the fact that light is going through different densities as it's curving. Um, and it, what it basically showed was that the sun would always look a particular way when it was setting and we never see that. Well, the sun probably wouldn't set anyway on a flat earth, but if, if it did, then it would look a very particular way, which it never does. But atmospheric refraction is a very real thing that you know that that happens do you and do you understand how atmospheric refraction happens um look i know i know how light refraction kind of works i've, I've done that experiment where you you can you know draw an arrow on a paper put it behind a cup of water and it reverses yeah, yeah. the arrow but in in terms of like like you know they'll take it like i've seen plenty of photos of like uh um, what's an example, a mountain or something, I don't know, whatever, a building, and the claim is that it would be, you know, hundreds of feet under curvature. So I don't understand how the, you know, the refraction would push it up so we can see it. Right, okay. The um, best way to explain it is um, as the light goes through the, the, the different densities, the closer to the, the water... The, the the lower the temperature and the, and the density right? and as you get further away it, it changes and as the light goes through the different densities of layers it, it changes the you know the angle that the light is is actually going and as it goes through a more dense layer it makes the light bend down right and because the light is bending down you can see what the light is bending down to it, it, you know okay, I mean? so that would include laser tests. So, yeah, for example, abs laser tests over laser tests over thousands of miles would show it at the same height, um, you know, same elevation. So that's because you're so you're saying that's because the light refraction is bending the laser down, yeah, to make it appear like it's not going over a curvature. Um, yeah, not it's, there's no curvature, I, but really it's actually going over the curve. Yeah, uh, I'd like to interject team? on two things real quick. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just did the calculations for, uh, about at 3000 miles, you would be about 30 miles off on your, uh, your drop uh, that you're calculating. With the uh, and the other squared. thing is, is that I'm not 100% sure that anyone's done a 1000 mile laser test. Uh, I think that's what you just said, correct? Did you not just say a 1000 mile laser test? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. Do you have any citation on anybody doing a thousand mile laser test? I think the longest I've seen was about 23 miles. 23 only? Um, yeah, I mean, no, the problem look, with lasers a thousand miles, is that they, they diverge I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I was, pulling an, I was pulling a number out of my ass there. But um, yeah, it it's sounds, definitely it been hundreds, like were, hundreds of kilometers. Uh, hundreds of kilometers as well. You would have to. You would really need to provide a citation on that yeah. so we could actually see. Yeah. Okay. The, um. The yeah. Experiment. Yeah. I, I understand. Not. Not, not yeah. to say. Look, not um, to call your bullshit out, no. but for us to be able I to look at it and see what you're. Your, yeah. Uh, with. Right Team, are, you, down are you able citation. to turn up your mic just a little bit, if possible? My mic. Yeah. They said that you're quite yeah. low, but I've got your max on my side. Um. Okay. So uh, the, the the big problem okay, so, with um, so laser tests. So my question tests, is, is, sorry, uh, let me let me just say this to you, Jordi. The big problem with laser tests over a large distance is that the nature of light, uh, a, a laser light, is that it projects in a cone. It diverges. So at the point of the laser, it's going to be really thin. But the further you get away, that light will have a you know it, it'll it'll be projecting out in a cone. And it will be refracting based on the atmospheric conditions. So laser okay. tests are, are very hard things to actually give you evidence one way or the other. I don't like laser tests either way because I don't think we can, we can use them to show that there's a curve or to show that the Earth's flat. Purely because we know that light refracts when it's going through different temperatures and densities. Okay. How's my yep. mic sound so now? I, I completely understand that. Um, it's just um, the flat earthers and blah, 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 but basically a lot of flat earthers believe that yes, there's a there's a lot of equations that we're given by you know scientists, but without evidence, like you know what I mean, like it could just be equations. So, is there an is there an experiment that proves that light refracts in this way? 
Do you know what I mean? Like, on a small scale, can you? Oh yeah. Can well, you, um, um, okay. So we can go back get like in time a, quite a while. Circular. Circular. Yeah. Well, we can go back in time quite a while to the the first person to really do refraction experiments was Isaac Newton. It was actually a little side project of his. Um, he he created all sorts of prisms and stuff to to be able to refract light. Uh, and Newton gave us a lot of the current understanding that we have of the way that light refracts. But there is many other okay. examples. I mean, I, I show it quite often on here, um, a, a laser going through a tank of water that's got some sugar in, done by Mick West. Uh, and the laser is literally bent, uh, you know, like a U. Um, so th there is lots of experiments that that show that refraction is the thing. It's not just equations that are pulled out of nowhere. The equations are based on observations. You should definitely show okay. the, the laser. So in this water, case, there's so that's how that's exactly how light would bend. Does that yeah. make sense? Say that again, sorry. So there's there's like um there's there's observational evidence that light has bent in that manner before. Like yeah. Let's just say we've taken a picture at something hundreds of kilometers away, the, whatever the formula says, for example, it should be under um, meters of ver um, of curvature, right. meter of curvature or whatever, um, which would, you know, the light would refract. Okay, let me show you a quick video. Um, <clears throat> so this is a guy called Mick West, who, uh, as well as being probably one of the smartest people that I've ever spoken to, also coded the first two Tony Hawk games, uh, which have recently been remastered. Um, so um, Mr. Mr. Mick West has a lot to answer for of many, many lost years of my childhood. Uh, and what, yeah, he did, right. <laughs> what he did was uh, he, um, he got this tanker, uh, fish tank, and he, he filled it with sugar water. Um, and then he put a little curved surface underneath it, okay? Um, you can... You could, this bit of metal to the side, that's mm -hmm. what he used as a curved surface. And then he filled the tank with uh, a mixture of, of water and sugar and some dye so that you could see. Um, and then he did a few experiments to, to show what would happen. Let me play it from here. Yeah. And, and before you ask, let me go ahead and answer the question that's on your mind. No, there is nothing wrong with that laser. <laughs> So um, he's shining it up at the top there where there's less a change of density. But as he brings it down, you can see that it gets towards the curved surface, which is then making a curved gradient. It causes the light to bend down. Um, and that's because of two things. That there is a gradient to the density caused by the sugar water. And that there's a curve put there by that bent piece of metal. And that makes the light, when it shines through... It shines through the different layers of density and refracts down, which would mean from the point of view of the person looking out at the light, you would see over the curve. Um, and I think yep. Yep. I think in here he actually, yeah, there we go. So he's put the Chicago skyline on the other side to, to, to show that you shouldn't be able to see it, but when you go down onto the curve, it, you know, it changes the way that you're looking at it. Um, and it shows that light will bend down to show you what is the other side of the curve. So yeah, there, there's lots of experiments that can show this um, that have been done by people like Mick West. But if you really want to go back to the basics of the experiment, it was Isaac Newton that, that kind of started our understanding of refraction. Mm -hmm. Does that All right, make question? sense? Sorry, you cut out there, Jordi. I do apologize. What did you say? Why aren't we hearing him? What's going on there? Uh, can I you hear me now? Oh, 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 there we makes, go. Sorry. I heard him. He said it makes yeah, you sense. Can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yep. can. Right. So do you, do you agree that um, light, light can refract over a curve to be able to see what's, to see what's there? Yeah, I definitely agree from that experiment. It's, it's kind of showed that it can bend over a curve um in in the instance of you know bending it over the earth um i'm not saying that i'm convinced that it can't but i need to probably do more do more research to see you know how they how they've extracted those equations and 
you know, how it all works exactly for it to bend over the earth. Right. I can give you the. So I'm, I'm the being skeptical. To the I'm being skeptical. I'm, no, I'm not saying what? that. I'm not you saying that. There's you're nothing wrong with being skeptical. There's nothing curve. wrong with being skeptical at all. Right. But the the issue comes when you outright deny stuff, which at the moment, Jordy, you haven't done. Right. You, you've seen an experiment. You've accepted that it shows that light can bend in that way, and that's a very intellectually honest position to take, which which is great. It's a bit of a a breath of fresh air for us, to be honest. Um, yeah, and also I, I want to say that like uh, one thing you can you can kind of, now that you've seen it for yourself, one of the flat Earth uh, proofs is the long distance photography, and I, I can't think of the mountain uh, the mountain off the top of my head. It's like uh, Fiennes, uh Peak de Fiennes or something like that. But anyway, the long distance photography record was accompanied with a with like a um, a letter kind of like a letter from the editor but a letter from the photographer and he was explaining in his own personal letter how he didn't even go to uh to film the mountain he filmed he didn't even know that he had filmed the mountain when he, that he had caught it on camera because it was he didn't realize that the refractive effects of the atmosphere were so great that he was going to be able to catch something so far away it wasn't until after he had produced his film uh, that he realized that he had caught something that was further away than anybody else had caught on camera to date. And so he's explaining the process by which he caught it. And, and he's also explaining how it's the, the day was unique. You know, it was a unique yeah. day to atmospheric refraction. And that's the only reason he was able to capture that image. And that in most days, he'll go out there and take the image every other day of the year. And that mountain won't be there. <laughs> um so yeah so it's not like he was going out there looking for flat earth proof he was yeah. no 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 it's the same no no he's the, not a flat earther no yeah he was just a regular photographer who made an observation yeah. that just so happened to break a world record uh once the the hype about the world record came out that's when flat earth jumped on it and said well you should not be able to see this mountain well, yeah, you're right. Even the photographer agrees with you. You should not be able to see this mountain. In no. fact, on other days when you take pictures of the mountain that he went out there to pho uh, photograph, you won't capture the mountain that he captured. The only reason you captured it on that day was because the atmospheric refraction was conducive to, to photography. Now, the, <laughs> the, the great thing uh, about... No, I get that. The great thing about refraction is that we know how to limit the effects of refraction, right? You're going to get the most refraction over water, close to the surface, right? Which always confuses me why flat earthers want to do laser tests over water when that is the condition that causes light to refract the most, right? So the best way to actually see what you're actually seeing is to get as high as possible um, and look at things that are relatively close. And I've got an observation I'd like to show you, uh, which I say that this observation is... 100% impossible on a flat earth, okay? So this was taken by a, a friend of ours, um, Miles Davis, another YouTuber, um, actually just up the road from where I live, uh, up a hill called Terrapin Law, which has got a surveying plaque to say that it's 210 meters above sea level, right? So we know that the camera height was 210 meters above sea level. Now, those pillars are of the, the fourth road bridge, uh, and the middle one is 210 meters above sea level. So you've got a, a tangent of your eye line. You know, the camera's 210 meters, the top of that bridge is 210 meters. Now, those hills in the background are about 40 kilometers away, maybe a little bit more, um, just beyond Edinburgh, and they are over 500 meters above sea level, right? Which makes this picture completely impossible on a flat earth because on a flat earth there's no reason why the hills would ever drop below that red line if that is your eye line but on a globe earth the maths for this actually matches perfectly you would see the hills at that height above sea level based on the distance that they are this one picture is one of the best evidence that i can show someone in in my mind what, what do you think about this um about this picture yeah um look i, I i'm gonna I'm not gonna lie I don't, I don't really understand how that wouldn't work on a flat earth and how it, how it works on a globe the science behind that um so 
Okay. Um, the height of the camera is 210 okay. meters. Yes. That yeah. bridge tower is 210 meters. Yeah. Why, why shouldn't you be able to see it if the earth is flat? Well, if the earth was flat, or the mountains, those, those, those hills that are 500 meters above sea level would be above the red line is the point, right? You would absolutely be able to see the mountains, but they would be a lot higher than they are. Because the top of those hills, the on the right, ah, I get you. I get you. It, it's 500 meters above sea level, yet it's dropping below the eye line of 210 meters. Okay, so you're saying that they're dropping because of the curvature of the earth? Yeah, that is the only explanation that, that makes sense as far as as far as I can tell, and I've never had anyone give a better explanation, apart from trying to say, well, perspective okay. does that, which, you know, doesn't really make sense. There's no reason why perspective would make something drop below an eye line. Mm, I get you. Yeah, um, yeah I, can't, I can't really say either way if it, if it definitely does... But you're right, it does appear that if it would be dropping below the line, could be the curve. Um, but, yeah. um... Hmm. And uh, this is... This is, is, this cam is this photo zoomed in, or is it...? Um, it's, from a, it's a still from a video, uh, and I think he does zoom in and zoom out to show. Um, and he even turns around and shows the other way, which has similar observations of hills that are actually even better. There's one that's nearly um, 900 meters above sea level, and he's got another marker that's 210, and again, the, it falls below. Um, so, you know, the, the, the entire video is, is something that is impossible to be shot on a flat earth. Okay. Is, is the video available on YouTube or anything, or is it just, yeah. a, just a photo? No, no, the, the entire video is on YouTube, on the channel Miles, Miles Davis. Um, not the jazz singer. You you normally okay. have to type Miles Davis flat earth to find them. Um, uh, let me see if I can find the actual yeah. video because I think it's one of the most popular ones on his channel. Kind of like Mike Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Mike, not Michael. Here we go. Yeah, so the, the, the link to the video... Um, I'll put the link to the video in the chat um, and I'll send it to you on, on Facebook as well so you can look at it at your own leisure. Um, that's the link awesome. to the video Thank you. from. And there you go, I've just sent it to you on Facebook as well. Um, Miles Davis has got many other observations on the channel that show similar things that, that are completely impossible on a flat earth. Um, now, now, there's one question I, I have to ask you. Like, I don't. I, I think flat Earth is completely idiotic and and, and stupid, right? Uh, and I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say that. And but being an Australian flat Earther really confuses me because oh, why can't you see Polaris from Australia? Oh, is that are you? Asking? Yeah, yeah. That, that's you know, it's a simple thing again that really in my mind uh, destroys the flat Earth. Surely, if Polaris is sorry, you cut. Above, cut. Sorry, I did hear you cut out a bit there. Can you hear me? You there, Jordy? Connection issues. I, I can hear you. Oh, just a little bit. Um, from my understanding, you're asking why we can't see. Yeah, one sec. Let me go to another room. Okay. Can you hear me a bit better now? Yeah, that that sounds fine. If I go closer to the Wi-Fi, it works. Okay, so what did you ask, sorry? Why we can't see Polaris from yeah, Australia? Yeah, yeah. Why, why can't you see Polaris from Australia? Um, because in, in, in my eyes, that's another um, flat earth killer. Look, I'm not saying I have proof for it, but in the flat earth model, it's a completely different cosmology. So they're saying that the stars are not billions of miles away and they're a lot closer. Um, so the reason we can't see Polaris from Australia is because it's too far away. It stays fixed over the north, which in, in, um, in the flat Earth model, north is the center, south is the outer circumference, and you know east and west is to go um, clockwise, clockwise and counterclockwise. So north is, is from, from Australia is obviously very far away. So if Polaris is close, and fixed over the north, it's just too far away to see. 
See, I why? I, yeah, I I really don't understand why. Um, and uh, I mean, like, why light is pretty uh, well I'll, understood. So you would have to explain I'll, why I'll, we I'll, can't I'll, see. I'll something explain that it this way. I'm, and I'm not. This is an argument now to say that this is proof that the flat Earth cosmology is correct. Just that under yeah. the flat Earth cosmology, this is why we wouldn't see it. So, for example, if, if you're in an endless hallway that's, you know, pitch black and we've got um, lights in the roof. Now, if the, light tra if the light was so far away from you, you wouldn't see it, would you? And it wouldn't light up the part of the room that you're in if it was very far away. Does that make sense um, to you? I mean, the... kind of, but, but here's the thing that the limit there that you're, you're talking about, uh, the limit is your eye. You know, if you, if you brought in a more sensitive, uh, photon receptor, then you would absolutely still see the, uh, the flashlight on the other side. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. Even with the most powerful, I mean, this, this is a huge, this, this back... is a huge distance. It's a very big star. It's, it's kind of like the. Sorry, what was that? What I said it? it's a very big star. I mean, the, the, it's like saying why the sun, why, why can't you see the sun in the sky, you know, at, at solar midnight, you know, when the sun's on the opposite side of the earth? Why can't you see it at night? I mean, it's big and bright. You can see how bright it is during the day. But for some reason at night, it, it, it just <clears throat> simply vanishes beyond this imaginary line in full size and then while it's getting smaller we just don't we just happen to not see it you know there's yeah. no explanation as to why the sun goes away at night on any flat earth model or on any flat earth forget a model just a a conceptual yeah. flat earth that that we could we could just talk about in terms of you know thought experiment wise there's no reason for the sun to go below the horizon number one number two it should never go at the same size it is as it is overhead Oh look, um, with with the with the sun, you're talking about how like when it sets, it appears to be the same size as when it's in the middle of the day. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Well, I've seen I've seen lots of time lapses depending on the terrain. For example, in a dry desert terrain, it actually does get smaller in the photos and videos I've seen and time lapses. So, over the ocean, it it'll kind of it'll kind of shrink and then it'll actually get bigger again as it's setting. I mean, okay. the explanation it, for flat Earth is that it's, uh, that it, the, you um, know, it's yeah, did, refraction that's causing it to change. Did, did the videos you watched have size. a soda filter on? What was that? Did the videos that you watch have a, a solar filter? No. Right. Let me get a video for you um, uh, from Red's Rhetoric. Do, do, do. Uh, so the, the important thing when you're looking at the sun is that the, the sun's really bright and it gives a lot of glare, which can overload the sensor of a camera. Um, and the way to get rid of that is to use a solar filter. Uh, mm -hmm. the is it? Oh, I need to find the right video. Sorry, give me one sec. Um, yeah, and if you use a, a, a solar filter... It, it takes away most of the glare of the sun, like a, a good portion of, of what you're seeing. Where the bloody hell? Team, can you okay. find the, the video? I seem to have lost it. Uh, which one are you looking for? Red's uh, angular size. Oh, no, sorry, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Right, so um, this is the video from Red's Rhetoric, okay, where using a solar filter, he filmed the sun from sun up to sundown, right? Um, let me get to the point where it starts. Let's see if you can actually see. Right. Um, yeah, and he filmed it from sun up to sundown. And throughout the entire day, it didn't change in angular size. Like, not even a, a bit. And he's not over water or in a, in a desert. He's just somewhere in, in Florida. Um, and like I said, he, he's using a solar filter, which takes away most of the glare. If you have a solar filter, the glare is going to affect what you see, especially during um, you know <clears throat> dusk and stuff when it, it can be quite bright. But when you take away the glare, 
there is no change in angular size at all, which is something that is completely impossible. Again, if the <laughs> earth is flat and the sun is small and local, as it moves toward you <laughs> during the day, it should get bigger and then it should get smaller as it goes away. But it doesn't. At <laughs> all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's Red's rhetoric. Uh, again, I can send you the video to see that. Red's has done a whole bunch of good stuff. Okay, awesome. Um, what else? But um, do you do you understand the flat? Like you know, you know how in the flat Earth model we're saying that the sun is leaving during you know um, due to perspective. Well, yeah, we know what's that is what. Yeah, we know that's what you guys say that the sun is going away due to perspective, but. Perspective really doesn't understand how the light still wouldn't get to you, or you know that you well, wouldn't it's, see the actual. It's, thing. it's it's kind of like I said. If if it's a small, if it's, I mean, this is on a really small scale. If you got a light bulb in in a huge hallway that's you know infinite in all directions, that light bulb, the light wouldn't light up the infinite hallway, would it? Uh, the it light would... bulb. You know, it the would light, light up you know, a lot light of it, a... but you could still see the light. No matter how far away you got from where you, you know, from the source of the light, um, right, it might be brighter, nearer the light, and get dimmer the further you go away, but you would still be able to see the light no matter how far away you got. It wouldn't just disappear into nothingness. So, so do you think that we... Okay, so would we, would we see the light of a light bulb in 100,000 you know, 100, kilometers away? Um, if there is nothing at all in between, there's no reason why you wouldn't still be able to see the light. Uh, and are you talking to... about with a zoom? Are you talking about with a zoom, or are you talking about even if you're just standing there looking with your eyes? Probably even if you're standing there looking with your eyes. Now, Sean Hufford did an experiment similar to this with. Um, he got a drone uh, and, and a laser, right? And he flew the drone away from the laser. It flew so far away from the laser that the laser itself, the actual emitter of the laser, was too small for the, the camera's aperture to pick up. It just simply couldn't make it out. You know, the resolution wasn't high enough. But you could still see the laser. Yeah, because yeah. even if you can't physically okay. see the thing that is making the light, light still travels, and it's still going to hit the optical sensors in your eyes. So even if you can't physically see the bulb, even if the bulb is too small to see, you could probably still see the point of light that is coming from it. Okay. So, um, do you have a any other like big questions that are, are big um, talking points? Yeah, yeah. Um, so gra gravity, yeah. Gravity um, is one of my favorite topics. Yeah, um, from from my understanding, the Cavendish experiment was was supposed to prove it. Yeah. Well, no, a not apart from not, Cavendish, not, it wasn't really um, designed to prove gravity uh, to start with. I mean, at that point, gravity was already assumed to be a, to be a thing. Uh, the Cavendish experiment itself was actually designed to to weigh the world. Um, it, just as a byproduct of what he was doing, we you know, were able to figure out the universal gravitational constant. Um, but yeah, gra Cavendish is a great example of what we call gravity, the phenomenon of mass attracting mass, that definitely exists. And Cavendish yep. shows that. So is there, a, is there any other experiments that prove it? The, any other experiments that show gravity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that, that show mass attracting mass. I've got a good one here. But after all that, right. did masculine work cooking was deteriorated it? Pulling it all the way up the mantle. Nevertheless, mass to okay, be used. Okay, here we go. From this, they could work out the. So, this is um, another place in Scotland. It's called the Shehelian experiment, based on, on, on a mountain here um, called the Shehelian. Uh, and I'm sorry if I butcher the name of that, but uh, let me just play it for you. Of Shehelian. But it was a big step to go through Mount Hutton. Yeah, yeah, Theoretically, chopped the mountain into what's become known as contour lines. It's the first time they were used. From this, they could work out the weight of Shehalian. But it was a big step to go from that to working out the weight of the world. Nevertheless, Masklin had a go. This is what he did. He dangled a long plumb line on a platform two-thirds of the way up the mountain. He knew 
two gravitational forces would act upon it. The main gravity would obviously be coming from the mass of the Earth, pulling it down. But the mass of the mountain itself would pull the plumb line towards it, slightly off vertical. We've exaggerated it here. That gravitational effect is what he measured. From the angle the plumb line was deflected, Maskelyne could calculate the mass of the Earth relative to the mountain. He knew what the mountain weighed, so he could work out the weight of the Earth. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of experiments that are similar along these lines that show that there is a gravitational force between masses. Um, and the great thing about this and the Cavendish experiment is that they show that the Earth isn't the only gravitational force. They show that there is <clears throat> forces acting in other directions due to masses being there. Okay, so, for example, the mountain was pulling it in this case. Yes, yeah. And then they could use that angle that the, the plumb bob deflected to calculate the gravitational force that the mountain had. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, all, it all matched the maths of Newton and the universal gravitational constant. It, it all matched up with what they were doing. And based purely on knowing the weight of the mountain from the contour lines and the composition and the amount that the, the plumb bob deflected, they were able to calculate the weight of the world. And it was about within 1.6% of what we now know it to be, which I think is pretty damn good for, you know, what is a pretty low tech experiment with a pretty large margin of error, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there is absolutely tons of experiments that have, have been done. Um, the Cavendish has been repeated many times. I mean, every first year physics student, including me when I did my degree, you, you do the Cavendish experiment, you learn about it, you understand the mechanics behind it. Um, and there's several people in this community, um, uh, uh, Blue Marble Science, um, uh, do, 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 BM Furbel, they built their own Cavendish experiments and confirmed the findings that, that we know to be true. So yes, there's definitely evidence <laughs> of gravity. Okay. Um, how about uh, the rotation? Um, have you are you aware of the um, you know that Netflix documentary uh, behind the curve? <laughs> if the Earth is spinning at one rotation every twenty four yes, hours, aware of that, that means that every hour it has to turn fifteen degrees. And if the, the energy in the chat, is guys. mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's twenty first century uh, navigation Thanks, systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely mm -hmm. precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Thank you very much, Bob. If Thank the you. Earth is spinning yeah, at one rotation now. every <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Uh, no, no. I've I've seen that. I've seen that. Um. And yeah, I'll I'll admit that that seems like it's proof of curvature. Um. It's just. Of rotation. This guy was a flat earther, wasn't he? I mean, he still is a, a flat well, earther. Is, very, very much. Is, yeah. yeah. He tried to explain it away with um, imaginary heaven energies and um, not understanding that the aether was disproven, you know, a, over a century ago. Uh, and, and even with him having this thing in front of him. And he was correctly explaining the operation of it to Nathan Thompson. He still yeah, had yeah. to make up something. You know, he even said, you know, uh, we didn't like that result. So we had to come up with a way of, uh, you know, of explaining it. I understand. What no. we were saying. L look, um, and that's I'm not they saying the it's whole not idea proof that it's, I'm not uh, saying it's heavenly not proof of energies the or and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I'll admit it doesn't make sense because I, I think they even covered it in metal or something. They covered it in something and it still oh, they, showed the 15. They tried to put it in a, um, oh, what did they call it? A, a non baryonic chamber or bismuth. something? Not, yeah, a, 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 bismuth bis chamber. a bismuth chamber. Uh, yeah, but you know, <laughs> they still measured rotation. And, and the great thing about yeah. those, those devices, um, fiber optic gyroscopes, they're called interf interferometers, basic interferometric fiber optic gyroscopes or ring laser gyroscopes. And there's millions of them around the world. Every single modern aircraft has three of them um, to measure your pitch and roll. And every time a pilot turns on the plane, all three of them show the rotation of the Earth. In fact, in, uh, in a lot of the aircraft systems, 
you have to input your um, position. So if you're at a certain airport, you have to input what the code for that airport is. If the, um, the code doesn't match what the rotation is saying where you should be, then it doesn't work. You know, it, it has to be correct based on these things, knowing the position based on the rotation. And, you know, it's kind of undeniable that they measure something. But there's a lot of other, even more yeah. simple experiments that show that rotation is a thing. Um, yep, yep. Um, so that that guy, that guy that did that experiment from behind the curve, um, asking other yeah. flat earthers, they're just saying that they're shields and uh -huh. it's not a real experiment. Which I admit that's that's you know it's not enough to just just you know deny it. But did he video it like, or you know did he just say this is the this was the result? Like, is there any peer he review? Has, he actually has video. Yeah. Hold on, I think he actually has video of him setting it down on a table and showing someone else how the moment that he turns it on, yeah, yeah, it immediately was... starts showing dr uh, drift. Yeah, I, I covered that in in my okay. video. In, in fact, the biggest video on my channel. And it's exactly there. fifteen, and it and it shows the fifteen degrees per hour. The, like, did he, did he have like a time lapse video or something at least? To, um, um, honestly, Bob hid a lot of the results. All right, um, he even said during that documentary. I mean, he must have forgot he was mic'd up or something. But when he was talking to another flat earther, he he said. You know what? If we if we released what we've found out right now about rotation, it's it's game over. So that's top secret. We can't let that out. So Bob knew damn well that he'd measured rotation. We have never seen the footage from that experiment. All right. To my knowledge, yeah. that footage doesn't exist. We only have, as far as I'm aware, Bob's word that they measured that rotation. But it doesn't make sense that a flat earther would go, "Yeah, we measured a 15 degree rotation." Exactly. It just seems a bit iffy here. Like, why would he? Why would he? Um, you know, even admit it if he was going to hide it? Why not just say it didn't work? You know what I mean? Like, because he's an idiot. It, is the only answer I can give you. Yeah, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to deny Bob that. Miguel but um, is yeah, I mean, the, the other idiot. flat earthers say that everybody in that documentary was basically a an actor. That they're like, oh, yeah. you know, kind of. Um, of course they do. Of course they do. How could they not say that? You know, how could they not say? Yeah, that? but more like a controlled opposition. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, but, but to say face, how could earthers, they not they... say that though? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that. That's the only thing that they can say to possibly counter what was said in that documentary. Now, if you ask Bob, he's adamantly against that narrative because he knows that he's a fucking flat earther. Uh -huh. But other flat earthers yeah. have turned on him simply because he's provided evidence that goes against their narrative. And they must. They, they have no other option but to say he's controlled opposition because the evidence is... No, nah, look, I, I, know, I know what you're trying to say. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're definitely controlled opposition, but, I mean, if you watch it and you look at guys like Mark Sargent, like, you know, why didn't they get somebody... Like, he, he, he looks like he'd be controlled opposition. You know what I mean? He's okay, like right. goofy, oh, flat earth. You know what? Right. But, but, Mark okay. Sargent is, a, is weird, right? Because... There is evidence that um, the whole Mark Sargent thing was set up a couple of years before he appeared, all right? Um, exactly. And, but I, I don't think that that's controlled opposition. I think that's someone thinking we can use this guy to make money from the Flat Earth movement, right? I think Mark Sargent knows that Okay, well so not controlled opposition, but you, he might not actually be a Flat Earther. He's an actor. No, there's no way in hell that Mark Sargent is a Flat Earther. He can never admit it no, because yeah. his entire life is based around that. But there is no way in hell he is a flat earther. I think okay, he's so, a very, so that, that I gyroscope think he, he, he experiment thinks to himself was, you know, that that was even shown in this documentary. Um, it, yes, how sorry. expensive is the gyroscope? One like second, 15, already, 20 uh, grand, they said. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, go um, well, Bob said that he spent that it was twenty thousand dollars. I've heard reports that it only actually cost fourteen thousand dollars. Again, <clears throat> that okay, speculation. So, we've never seen the receipts or anything, um, but. He said it cost twenty thousand dollars. If if that's true, and I mean, ba basically that's an easy proof of the curvature of the Earth. I mean, of not the, the curvature, of the, rotation. the rotation. Yeah. Um. So we'd expect to see somebody else be able to do that pretty easily too. Yeah. Um, is there a reason no one does it? Is it just because you're saying that there's no point to prove? the rotation because it's already assumed to be correct or well ev every you know what I mean? like, it's, gyroscope it's, in the world shows it that's what i'm saying every time a pilot turns on their plane 
they're doing that same experiment. They are measuring the rotation oh, with fiber optic gyroscopes. It doesn't, if, you, if you turned it on and left it in the same place, it doesn't show 15 degrees per hour. No, it does. It, any, anywhere, at any point on the world, it will show 15 degrees per hour. Not just in one direction either. It shows it in three axes, which is only possible on a sphere. Uh, and um, Bob, actually, this is what he did. He got that gyroscope. Uh, I covered this in one of my videos, um, right? He, he got, he had his fire optic gyroscope on the table in front of him and he's talking to Nathan Thompson and he turns it on, right? And as soon as it turns, he turns it on, he's like, look, right? It's measuring that 15 degree rotation. The second you turn it on, it's, that's, that's what it's measuring. You know, he shows it doing that in operation, you know, so it, you know, they do do it. And, you know, it, it's kind of an undeniable fact that that's what fire optic gyroscopes pick up. But there, there is other ways to show that the Earth is rotating. Because if the Earth is rotating, no, Nathan Oakley, that's not a fallacy. If the Earth is rotating, there's there's certain effects that should happen, right? Um, for instance, a drift of a pendulum, right? Uh, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's the what's that pendulum called that's supposed to be improving the um, rotation? Falkholtz pendulum. Falkholtz. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's right. Uh, I have a video that um, I like to show quite a lot um, from a, a YouTuber and a, um, a PhD physicist called The Gentleman Physicist. Uh, and he has a video on his channel of him making his own Foucault's pendulum. Here it is. Uh, now, let me bring that up so you can see. Oh, bloody hell. I've lost my page. Sorry, one sec. I need to have a desktop catcher on there. All right, let me put the video in to here so you can see it. So what he does, he gets, um, he goes into a high rise building and with a, a homemade pendulum made from some fishing wire and a concrete and plastic ball, uh, he, he sets it swinging. All right, here we go. Side and unable to see outside. Okay, so he goes into this. Oh, go away. I think I've seen this. Right. He goes into the the high rise building. Uh, skip so we can get to it and show you what he's doing. Here we go. All right. So he sets up this uh, this pendulum swinging. All right, and he lets it swing for about forty three minutes. Okay, and as it's swinging, it's going through this little thing of ink with a brush underneath, and it's drawing a line. Okay. Now over that yep. line that it, it swings, it it drifts. Um and it gives them an angle, okay? So what they do is they measure that angle and using some pretty basic trigonometry, they can calculate based on that angle what their latitude should be. Because at each latitude, you're gonna have yeah, so a different amount that it drifts, right? So they yeah. get this angle, they do the maths, and they come up with a figure that is pretty much their latitude to within about a degree, I think it is. And that is, and, and evidence that the Earth is rotating, because that is what we expect to happen to a pendulum if the Earth is rotating, and the maths. All right. So is that because is that because depending on where you are in the Earth, it needs like if you're in the middle of the Earth, it would need to spin more uh, it, every twenty four hours. Yeah. So if you are at the North Pole with a pendulum, uh, a pendulum would drift yeah. three hundred and sixty. No, it would just be a straight line. Yeah. You wouldn't get a drift at the equator because the, the plane of oscillation would match the rotation of the Earth. Has anyone done it in the equator and posted a video of that? Uh, not that I know of, no. Um, um, uh, but I, I invite yeah. anyone to because, you know, if the, if the math the is other, correct. The other you... anomaly, I, I do want to point out too, the other anomaly that you'll get is that uh, while the... While you can calculate your latitude based on the you know the degree that it, it the degrees in the time that it, it moves, you can also uh, figure out what side of the equator you're on because uh -huh. in one in one side it will be in a um, clockwise rotation and yeah. in the other side it'll be in a counterclockwise rotation. Yeah, this would suggest that I've the heard, shape I've heard of the, that. the surface. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. I'm sure you guys know Eric DeBay, yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's doing a video about me at the moment, apparently. I'm waiting for that to come out. Is he? Why don't you have him on the show? Oh, you don't think I've asked? 
<laughs> he's he far too afraid to, to come on the show. Um, he, he he responded to me on Facebook and he said, "No, Craig, you're just gonna have to sit in your lonely chair all by yourself." Um, I've asked him many times <laughs> to come on. He's far too afraid to. He doesn't debate. Um, Eric, Eric DeBay is another fake flat earther. That uh, you know. You reckon he's a fake flat earther? Yeah, he's a con man. He's a snake oil salesman. I don't. I think he's. I think he's a real flat earther. But really? I think that he. Yeah, I think that Mark Sargent is fake. I think Eric Dubé is an actual flat earther. Okay. I think he's a an yeah. anti sciencer an anti sciencer <clears throat> So that would put him in the realm of being a a, a legit flat earther. Look, I think I think you're right, but I don't think I think he's anti. He thinks it's pseudoscience. He's not anti-science. He's just he's just saying that it's not real science. Well, anti-actual but, um, science. I'm just, yeah, I'm he's anti-actual curious. science. Yeah, yeah. He probably so, so he's, science he's an expert. So I'd be curious to see what he says towards these arguments because you you know what I mean. Like I haven't these experiments for myself. And if if what you're saying is true, and you know, depending on your latitude, the thing drifts in a different way. And you know what I mean. Like if that's true, then obviously I would. I would change my stance on flat earth, but I haven't done these experiments or seen someone conduct it there and then there. And you know what well, I mean? To, to be able to confirm. Let me, but, let me ask yeah, you a question. I mean, as, an, as, an Eric, as an Eric Dubé, as someone who, who's bringing up Eric Dubé's points and, and calling Eric Dubé an expert, which I, I actually find that pretty <laughs> yeah, hilarious. That, that, that uh, do you, do you, <laughs> no, no, when I say expert, I mean, a butterfly. He's, he's well versed, you know, he's, uh, an Sorry, expert, yeah, okay, an expert in flat earth. Yeah, he's an expert in flat earth. I'll give him that. Um, but, okay, so uh, do you understand why a butterfly can fly, but a like a body of water does not fly? Do you understand that? No, look, I, I understand it. I understand that it's because of the Earth's gravitational pull. And, you know, it's... It's... Stro it's, it's, it's... How do I put it? I get where he's coming from, but then I also get where the flat, like where the um, the heliocentric model is coming from. If it is that certain gravitational pull, it would be strong enough to to pull the oceans down, but let the butterfly fly. If that makes sense, like well, well the yeah. butterfly has wings. <laughs> yeah, and two things: a, but a butterfly has wings, so it can create a force in the opposite direction of gravity. Plus, a butterfly has a lot less mass than the oceans, and the the main equation that we use for gravity is newton's law which is fg equals g m1 m2 over r squared and the important part there is the m1 and yep, the m2 yep. that's the two masses right so if you've got the mass of the earth as m1 and the mass of the butterfly as m2 which is a lot smaller it means there's going to be a strong a smaller gravitational force acting on the butterfly than there is on the entire body of ocean no no i, I completely understand that it's it's more just. It's. No, he, I think he it's more just. It, that, he words like, it know, cleverly. We, we, we don't okay, see. He, he words it cleverly. Yeah. He words it cleverly so that he can. That he can uh, bring up confusion in you. Like, bring up doubt. Not confusion, but doubt. Okay? Like, that's a great idea, right? Why can a butterfly fly, but a body of water can't? That's. Like, it, that is so off the wall. That people stop to think about it for a moment. Mm -hmm. If you can get them to stop and think about it for a moment, then you've essentially get, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a working idea. It's... But the ridiculousness of the idea, if you just barely know any science whatsoever, you can you would understand why a butterfly will fly. And you'll also understand that if a let's say a butterfly were to die midair, right? Like it just completely blacks out midair. It doesn't continue to fly. It falls to the ground just like water will yeah no i understand that you know it's it's to do with it flying because it's you know flapping the wings and you know all that stuff but um it's more just he's saying that observationally we can't prove gravity which you've kind of showed me that maybe there are experiments that prove it yeah so i'll you know i'll well, give yeah. you that but he's just saying that you know there's no other forces that act like gravity like the like magnets don't work like that so I guess he's comparing gravity to a magnet force that it's like, whoa, it's so strong that it can pull oceans, but it lets butterflies fly. But I know what you're saying. Gravity doesn't act like that. Gravity is completely different. Um, but I think he's coming from a point of view that, you know, like the fact that all the space photos and, you know, we've, we've been to space now 
in the seventies, you know, out of low Earth orbit, but supposedly we've lost the technology. Is that right? Team, do you want to take that one? Uh, well, yeah. Okay. So the the analogy I like to give to people is like this: Let's say you wanted to build like a Ford Model T, right? You wanted to just rebuild a Ford Model T, and I can even go back less time. You know, we can go to the seventies and say back when diesel cars were uh, still running around, like not not diesel cars, but yeah. leaded gasoline cars. Okay. That we found out leaded gasoline was was dangerous to the people, so we stopped putting it in cars. Therefore, we no longer needed leaded gasoline parts. All right. So, yeah. finding a leaded gasoline gas filter or finding like parts for a car that was specifically designed for leaded gasoline would be quite hard to do. I mean, we don't. It's not like we're not smart enough anymore to recreate the technology. But the effort that we, it would take for us to go back and recreate that technology is simply not worth the the benefit that we can use with it. You know, like that that technology was built for a different form of electronics than what we use today. Um, there was just so many different reasons why we cannot use that technology with what we have today and what we're trying to do today. Losing it, that's a whole different other thing. When they say we lost that technology, they're not saying they can't recreate it. It's just they don't, like most of those parts want are, to. are pieces in museums It would be a now, painful you know? process. It, it's much yeah. easier to move forward than it is to move backwards in this situation. Yeah, I get you, but but I'm just, I'm just thinking now, like we've sent humans to space, you know, in, in the 60s, 70s. Now, back then, it was a lot, it was a lot less advanced. And I mean, we've got so many billionaires now compared to then. I mean, you'd think that with the technology and the money that it would have cost to do it back then, now, why hasn't someone done it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's happening it, like, it's right not now, easy. that's the thing. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's I, know, I know it's happening with Musk and all that and like, I know it's happening, but well, like there is just a lot of not just Musk. You know, right? it's it just you know, it, NASA have got. I the Artemis yeah, I know. I know it's not just Musk, stuff. but you know, there's just a lot. India sending that. probes. Just, like, all right, we're waiting now, but how long are we going to wait for? Um, well, once NASA, it happens, NASA I'm sure a lot 24. of flat earthers would happily admit they were wrong if there's proof no, of people won't. and you know, like no, people can actually won't. go to space. Okay, so okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. What would be the difference between us going to the moon today versus us going to the moon in 1969? Because if it's simply what, a visit to the, the moon that would, no, 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 I'm saying if it's simply a visit to the moon that will convince all flat earthers that they're wrong, why is it, why do they not, are they not admitting they're wrong when we've already been to the moon in 1969? What would a 2024 well, revisit to the moon? They don't, they don't trust, they don't trust NASA. Mind? I mean, you look at, I mean, now we're getting into stuff that can't be proven, but you, you, you look at like all the NASA and the space agency symbols using Freemasonry symbols. So they all use that as an as evidence like you know they're all controlled by the same people and um you know like yeah, i mean there's I think, even an I think my ISS being, live but, but i think ISS my points being from... lost but i think my points being lost Sorry. on you i think what what uh what i mean to say is that what would be the difference between us going to the moon in, in 1969 versus us going to the moon in 2024 it's still going to well, be I'm, a NASA project. No, no, because so, I, I'm not. I'm not talking about them sending one astronaut to the moon or a group of astronauts, and then that's it. Obviously, they're not going to believe that. I'm talking about if it becomes available to, you know, the general well, public space who tourism, are at least, yeah, yeah. You know, space, the, the, the wealth, space tourism the wealthy, is an in, you know, inevitable. Yeah, space tourism is inevitable in our society. We've literally almost explored the entire Earth. Uh, there's, you know, there's. Uh, tourist trips to Antarctica right now, one of the most remote places on Earth, if not the most remote place. Um, we also, you know, space is next, no matter, it's inevitable for space to be next, basically. Yeah. And that's why you're seeing this rush of private companies to get, you know, space-based travel and space-based luxury and what, what, what other ideas yeah. are being thrown out there. I mean, they're only ideas right now because this is a new... Um, a new venture that we as humans are, are taking, you know, we've never put people up there for luxury. We've always only sent people up there for scientific reasons or exploration. Yeah. Reasons. Look, I'm not denying that it's ever going to happen and saying that I'm a hundred percent sure. Cause I'm not, but it's just flat earthers don't trust that that's actually true. And it's going to happen. Like Elon, Elon Musk's got a photo from earth from a hundred and something. I think I, I might be wrong here, but I, I Elon Musk's photo of Earth 
is from closer, but Earth appears way further than from the ISS. And they're apparently real photos. This isn't like they're admitted, you know, the admitted composite images. This is like supposed to be real photos. And then it's like, this, like it, it clearly doesn't make sense. So um, that's why they don't trust them. So, I mean, I, what do I you mean, guys think about that? Why, why a lot, is Elon Musk's that is, photo? Yeah, not, a lot of that is not understanding how cameras work, right? So if you were to um, zoom, if you were close to the earth, right, but you zoomed out as much as you could and you had a camera with a really large field of view, it could make yep. Earth look smaller in the background, right? But then if you zoomed in and used a smaller field of view, Earth would look a lot bigger. Um, and I can give you an example of that kind of phenomenon with, with this, okay? So this is a picture of a globe up close, using a 10 millimeter lens from uh, from uh, 10 inches away, okay? Now this is the exact same globe taken from 15 to 18 feet away using a 315 millimeter lens. Now you can clearly see that in this one, Africa looks a lot smaller and you can see more of the globe, right? But they're the same globe. Yeah. It's just the way that I... cameras work and different lenses work and field of views work. Look, I, I, get, I get what you're saying, and it definitely definitely shows it. But in this particular photo, like the ISS, do you know how, how far is it from Earth? Um, well, Red's Rector actually measured that. Uh, 248 kilometers, is it, uh, team? Uh, it's like 400 kilometers, 200 and something miles. Yeah, and, and like all right, 10, so from the ISS, um, I think. you can't even see the whole Earth in the whole globe, can you? No. No, but from, from Elon Musk's photo, it's closer, like much closer, I think half the distance, but you could see the whole globe. So there's no way it could zoom out. Like it's, it's kind of different than when you're showing, like this kind of zooms out to see the whole globe. It doesn't really... I don't think any of Elon Musk's photos from Starman, Starman were, were that close because the payload didn't even open until it was, I'm pretty sure, further than the ISS. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I'd like to see if, if there is a photo, I'd like to be able to see that, but I honestly don't think there's a photo from uh, the Tesla with Starman that close. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, uh, and if I am, I'd like to be corrected, but... I'm just going to... I've, I've sure got the photo saved. saved. I'm just okay. checking here the distance exactly to... Um, so I don't pull numbers out of my ass. I mean, if it's still out there right now, it's going to be about 3 million miles away. Most of that car would be destroyed from solar radiation. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the payload opened a, a point further than the ISS's orbit. So I, I kind of want to show this to you real quick, uh, just uh, like to kind of give an idea of what when they're talking about using different cameras that have different field of views, they they make things in the background look different, like completely look different. You would it would fool you almost to a to an extent if you couldn't uh, if you didn't know that there were uh, the field of view on cameras and whatnot. But this is from the movie Jaws, and give me one second to pull it up. Um, this is called a dolly zoom. Let me uh, give me one second. <clears throat> people keep saying there's right. life on Mercury. So, so yeah, so the camera itself, okay, I believe the camera itself only gets slightly closer to the person if it if it even moves at all. But just by changing the field of view, it it gives this zoom effect that alters the background. So it let's say you were to take a steal from the beginning of this and a steal from the back of this, you would say that there's a disproportionate ratio between the grass that you know that has not moved the size, let's say, the, sh the, the mm -hmm. height of the grass and the height of the person. 
with one field of view, you can say that, you know, if you keep, if you maintain the field of view, then you can say no matter where I move that, it'll be easy for me to calculate its proportions. But if you change the field of view, then it will literally change the size of the things in the background in relation to the size of the things in the foreground. And here's an example. Wow, that's intense. Can you do that? Um, can you slow it down to 0 0.5 speed, team? I've never seen that much of a, a change. That's quite impressive. This was, a, I think, I'm pretty sure that this became a film technique after it was used in this film uh, with the either the, just this scene or a few scenes. But it's now used in many films. And it, this uh, this little thing right here shows a, a compilation of, of major films. You'll notice it every time you see it now. But here it is in, in slow motion. That's amazing. And it's simply a, a fact. Of, it, it's simply wow. just changing the field of view right here. you see how it changes right his here, face like as well, though? Wait, I, I want you to go back. Changes everything. I want you to look at the guy's face, right? And ha at the beginning, how much of his face is taken up by his nose? And then at the end, how much of his face is taken up by the nose? Like, yes. the, the difference in that is, is quite shocking. Can you play that again, team? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It'll, I'm sure it'll start here in a second. Just because oh, yeah. it's in that slow yeah. motion. Yeah. So right there, it looks here like it not, not much of his face is taken up by his nose, but yeah, now then, it's right in. Now his nose so burst. So much more of his nose is taken up. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> um, no, no. You, but that's you why. Point. That, yeah. Yeah, that, that's why it's so important to know all the details of everything that you're you're looking at. Look, because you can easily be look. This photo, if, if it's know. if it's real though, it's it's not to the same degree as even that because like, I've got I had the number here, yeah. Um. So apparently, oh fuck, I've lost it. So apparently, it was 170 kilometers away from the Earth. Have you got the photo? How do I put it onto the link? Um, you how do I, how do I put it on your video? Share... Can I do that or no? Yeah, can, I, you, can, can I send it to you on Messenger? You can either send it to okay, me on I'll Messenger send it to you on or Messenger. you can share your screen through, uh, through Zoom. Either way will work. All right, I'm going to send it to you through Messenger. Okay. All right, cool. I'll take it off of there. Because it could be a fake picture, but if it's a real picture, then um, even that doesn't explain it. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they've uh, seen film techniques like that in um, in Ghost. Hitchcock used it quite quite a lot. Um, uh, Dapper Dino says the technique was first used in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, but the Jaws example is more famous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not 100 percent sure on the the history of it, but I just know that it was it became famous uh, because of <coughs> when they were, it was used in Jaws because that was such a dramatic effect on foreground versus background it's incredible uh, and you can see it in a lot of movies uh after jaws a lot mm. more movies after jaws um i sent you the wrong one now but i just was going to maybe get you to answer that one after um, i haven't had any come through yet on messenger oh there we go that's the wrong one but right okay um I think we already answered that one about the sun. Yeah. Thank you, Zep. I'm going to have a look through that. Uh, okay, we're just waiting for uh, the thing to come over. Bear with me, guys. Yeah, getting Eric DeBay on to debate would be great. Um, and if any flat earthers would like to go and nudge Eric DeBay to actually, you know, step outside his own channel and, and come and come and have a debate, then that would be how great. about how about ODD TV? Have you guys watched his stuff? Or oh, about? yeah, I've asked him for debate. He's fact, an idiot. Yeah, he blocked me um, on his channel on his last live stream because I said, thanks, Bob. Listen, the, I'm, I'm telling you, man, the yeah. bigger, the bigger, the bigger flat earthers, okay, the ones that are more well known, will not risk the, their reputation having a conversation with me and fight the flat earth. 
No. That's just the way it is. Um, it, like, it never goes well for the Flat Earther when having a conversation with us. Unless it's like a conversation like we're having tonight. Yeah, this is a decent I don't have a problem with this. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this type of conversation. You know, you're asking good questions. It seems like you're receptive to what we're saying. I'm not asking you to believe everything I'm saying tonight, but at least you're being receptive to what I'm saying. A lot of times we have to yeah, walk Flat Earthers through through things over and over and over, and they you can tell that their logic that something's miswired in their head or they're doing it on purpose but they don't go hmm that's a good that's a good example that i'll have to look into it it's always uh okay so i don't understand that again, yeah, it's again and you're like ah, exactly okay, right okay now, so the photos come through yep yeah, i've got that now i honestly don't think that photo is from 177 kilometers um uh, if anyone in, this, in I've got it on the stream now. If anyone in the stream can fact check oh, that for yeah, me, that's it. Okay. but um, I don't think that that photo is from 177 kilometers. Uh, yeah. Uh, or like um, you know, I'll send you a few ones where they show that. You know, they, they reuse the clouds, the exact same clouds, you know, in photos from 1978 to 2017. And I know NASA admits that they're photoshopped because they like, you know, like they're not they're not all real photos of the Earth. But it's just weird. Like, why would they well, have their official no, photo real photos as a non of the like, Earth? No, hold on. They're real photos of the Earth. That's that's the thing. See, there's limitations. No, no, they're not photos, photos of the ball. The they're not photos from far away to see the whole ball. They're yeah, yeah. Okay, so that they're... that's true. That's true. So the way they do it is they put, um, okay, so they put these satellites in circular orbit, right? And they're following straight lines. But while they're following their straight lines, the Earth rotates underneath them. So as they go around, they film the Earth. And the earth rotates as it comes back around so what happens is you do get these small pieces that are missing from one photo to the next and it has okay, to fill it in so what it does is it uses uh like an artificial intelligence or even a, a human an actual human intelligence to go in and and kind of touch up the areas that were not covered by the the camera but at the same time those are real photos of the earth and you're, you're still not accounting for how they're taking these photos, you know, not you in particular, but flat earthers still don't account for how they take those photos, even though we can explain what they mean by uh, it's Photoshop because it has to be or why something you yeah, know, yeah. might have some kind of Photoshopping in it or uh, it might be a composite of different, different, you know, different cameras uh, taking different colors of the earth that happens too. The RGB Earth, where they put all the composites together, and that comes out with the real form Earth. They lighten and color it just for to accentuate some of the colors. That's always a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So that's but why some, that's once, why like, is it not a Ru picture you know, of the Earth. Russia's ahead, I'm sorry. Earth would look different color to NASA's Earth. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, my, my my question my, is, my, sorry, one my quick bit of research um, shows that that photo was taken from a about 5,000 kilometers um, was a, um, a couple of weeks maybe after the launch. Uh, and that's not so even saying that you're seeing one entire... Yeah. That, 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 that's not even saying that you're looking at an entire hemisphere of the Earth. You know, when, when we've had uh, uh, program demonstrations where it shows that even as you get closer to the Earth, you're, the furthest you can see is still a 360 degree circle. So even like right now, if you were to take a camera and, you know, lift it up above the, the surface of the earth and take a picture, it's only going to cap like it's only going to capture a circle, you know, but the circle yeah. itself oh, no. has a Four limit to, to how what? far away it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. that's where the, the earth is curving away. But at the same time, uh, it's still going to look like a circle. Your limit of vision is going to be 360 degrees around and it's going to be the same distance based on your height. So it's still going to look like a circle. Mm. But yeah, uh, my that 177 is kilometers. Yeah, yeah. That's not that's not correct, is it? No, is that what you're I, it's not actually 100. Uh, I'm well, we don't to know find, from I'm our best. I'm struggling to find the source uh, picture, but looking online, a bunch of people talking about it. Um, I've got two figures: one of 5,000, one of about 11,000 kilometers away. 
Um, okay. So, you know, I honestly... It's not unusual for flat earthers to fake memes, right? Uh, and yeah. Yeah. That, that is a fact. <laughs> yeah, it's I easy to um, add a little bit of text yeah, to something. Yeah. yeah. Now, my question is, you know how we've got all these photos of different planets, um, supposedly like, you know, Saturn and, and that. Are they, are they taken from a, from a telescope or is there probes sent there? Uh, a combination well anybody can take yeah you you yourself th this is something that any person can do okay if you go get a decent telescope you yourself can look at jupiter not only can you see jupiter um, but you can see the galilean moons going around jupiter i'm talking about like the, the i'm not talking about the um you know this the telescope type photos i'm talking about like the nasa ones that they give us like do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the, the, proper, well, the proper apparent photos. Are they, are they taken by a telescope or a probe that's actually near the, well, the planet? NASA probably doesn't take those. It's, those are more astronomy um, yeah. people. But so there have been probes sent to uh, uh, pretty much everybody in the solar system. Uh, I mean, uh, where, the Juno probe went to Saturn, didn't it, team? Uh, I want to say... I don't know if it, I don't know what the names are. I think it's I think Voyager one and Voyager two. Is that not the two yeah, they, satellites they, that were sent out? Yeah, they both took pictures whilst they're going through the solar system. They're, they're both, uh, first they're off, both, let me yeah. ask you a question. Let me ask the uh, the flat Earther question. Are you talking about the satellite or the pictures that are taken from satellites that are zooming past the planet, or take pictures that are terrestrial taking taken like here on Earth? No, not terrestrial. I'm talking about um. Where it, it okay. looks okay. like so that's the where pictures I guess I of, it basically looks like the photos of Earth. Yeah, okay, so they've they've sent probes to the outer planets already. Yeah. And they've uh, yeah, so they photographed them and filmed them as they put as they flew by. Cassini went to Saturn, thank you, uh Cuber Q that's that's right, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Cassini Cassini, Cassini actually um did a, a hard crash in, into Saturn as you know, is its final thing. But there is also telescopes in space that can take images of, of of them extremely well uh there's yeah. a there's a combination there's lots there's lots there's so many pictures of the bodies that in the solar system from different methods juno is currently yeah. orbiting jupiter um yeah so i mean i'm not saying that they're they're they're, they're not real but why isn't there more folk like real photos of earth like if they if if they can go and take photos of Saturn, why don't we constantly get real photos of Earth? Why why do they have to every year? Uh, Himawari create eight. A Photoshop Himawari eight. It shouldn't be that new... hard. Discover yeah, but okay, so it's not. It yeah yeah. So there there was a a channel on Directv that did a twenty four hour live stream of Earth for years, I believe. Echo Star Eleven. Uh, now we have Echo Star Eleven. Yeah. Uh, now we have um, Himawari 8 that's up that takes a full picture, uh, full image of the Earth every 10 minutes. So six times an hour we have one satellite, only one of the many that are up there taking pictures of the Earth and looking at the Earth. Only one is sending, er, er, there's one of them gives us uh, six new pictures every hour, every day, nonstop. And is this far away and to you see can the whole globe or just the... Hey, hey, and you know what's so beautiful about this? You're in Australia, right? This is an Australian, yeah. I, I, well, I think it's a Japanese, it's a Japanese satellite, system, but it's, yeah. it's right over Australia. You yourself, here's what you can do, okay? The next time that it's cloudy outside, okay, partially cloudy, go look at Himawari 8 and go outside and see if you can't identify the clouds in the sky that you see on Himawari 8. This is the That's a good way to test whether that... That's a good way to test whether you're actually being lied to by the, you know, by the, the, by them or they, why they are lying to you. That'd be proof right there. Or it would, yeah, it would. get you away from that cliff known as the flat earth and have you start coming back to reality. Because this is reality, bro. I mean, unless you can tell me yeah. how they do this, this is reality. And this was taken within the last 10 minutes from space, basically. Uh, and um, if, you, if you went outside right now, uh, I mean, there doesn't seem to be much cloud cover in Australia at the moment, but I'm pretty sure most of you are near the coast. If you were anywhere near here that, that, that was near any of these clouds, you could go outside and look at the sky and see the same clouds from underneath. People and, have done it yeah, already. Yeah, Wade's, Wade's Underworld, about. Where's Wally? Now, one of the um, things I like talking about, okay, just up to the top left 
uh, of where you can see the Terminator line. Um, it's the border of Mongolia and China, okay? And this satellite is, um, was able to see wildfires in Mongolia. And there, there was no other way that these wildfires could have been spotted, right? It was purely because this satellite saw the smoke and saw the wildfires that they were able to evacuate, I think, 17 villages that would have been wiped out by these wildfires. If it hadn't been seen from space, the smoke and the stuff and uh, for using this satellite. I mean, this satellite has literally saved people's lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, um, have you seen the GIF I've just sent you? Um, it's just a, it's a, it's a little like time lapse video from NASA of the the dark side of the moon passing past Earth. Okay, let me get that up to sex. Uh, it came through as a PNG, not a GIF. Uh, I think it doesn't doesn't work as a GIF on, on Messenger. I think it changes it. Um, but have, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. It's that one where the you see the moon past the Earth. Yeah. Yes, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, I think um, both of us are familiar um, with this. Yeah. Is that supposed to be real footage, or is that is that admitted that it's like a comp composite? No, that's real footage. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, the, cl the clouds do move very slowly. But that's real life. That you know, wow. the, the, they, the cloud systems that you can see from this distance are massive. Um, it's not like you're yeah. seeing up close little cumulus nimbus clouds. You know, these are big, big weather systems seen from space, and they take a long time to move. So you're saying if I look really closely, they do move. Yeah. Like just very slightly. Yeah. Um, probably twisting. Okay. It, rather than going left to right, you're probably seeing so, bits of it. Yeah, twisting. yeah. So it's, think think about it like this: the uh, the um, you're looking at a twelve thousand five hundred mile arc right here. Okay, above where this satellite's at, because it's roughly above the equator, I believe. Is that correct? If I, it's yeah. this one to be roughly above the equator. Okay. Yeah. So the arc you're looking at from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen is twelve thousand five hundred miles. So no matter this this moon, when it passes by, of course I can't tell you the time on the moon without actually seeing the original footage I, or anything I've like that. But gift. even over hours, the, for you to see a significant change of the Earth, if you to see a significant well, let's see, yeah. Well, I mean, you can't really tell from it's, that. It's um, hard to tell from that, but I mean, let me just freeze it between frames a sec and. So what was right, this, yeah, Echo no, Star 11? Uh, I'm pretty sure this one was Echo Star 11, but even between those couple of frames there, um, the the cloud f uh, system that's right above the moon at the moment, not the one right above it, the one just above that, you can see that change shape in this GIF. Um, when it starts, it's a little more, more spread out. At this point, it's um, the tail that's at the top is more towards the bottom of it. So even in... Like the entire tail, uh, like looks like a six there. The entire top of the six changes shape as it goes around. It's now wavy. So yeah, those clouds definitely move. You should be able to slow that down too. Uh, no, it's a gift. You need to. <clears throat> oh wait, no. uh, playback speed. Oh yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure you could slow that down. Should have a slider bar there. Yeah, okay. Is it still not slowing it? No, no, it's not. It's not changing it. Oh. But no, those clouds change. Uh, I, you can see it. <clears throat> um, so just to say again, right? If you look right in the middle of the Earth right now, just to the right of the center, there's a little cloud that looks yeah. like a six. Okay. And as that goes along, the the top of the the bit that looks like a, the top of the six starts to get wavy, and you can see it there that it's yeah, like it a completely change, different it? shape so yeah the clouds definitely change mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're changing um they're not they're not moving a lot but you're saying that they wouldn't move they're more that's not yeah how you wouldn't see them move. yeah, yeah no. you wouldn't if we don't yeah, if like you saw see them, them move like if, yeah. you see that from a satellite image like that yeah um all right, I've got a couple more questions, but I'm just wondering, do you guys have like a time limit that you just wanted to go to the next thing or? Uh, 
No, honestly, mate, we're quite happy with you guiding this conversation. All right. Um, I'm enjoying a refreshing, intellectually honest conversation. You've got genuine questions, you're <laughs> receptive to answers. It's nice. So please just hit us with your questions and we'll do our best <laughs> to answer. All right. Um, I've, I've sent you a couple um, photos of the moon and the sun in the sky. Okay. So do you want to bring them up? Yeah, two secs. Uh, do, 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 do. So I've got this one. Okay. All right. So in, in the flat Earth model, they're saying that the sun and the moon are the same distance. Um, and that's why we see them appear at the same size as it eclipses. Um, right. You know, and the moon goes through the exact same 30 day cycle, kind of like a chick. You know what I mean? Um, it's like, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. it's always going to be a full moon when it's going to be a full moon. But one of the things I get, I see is that when the sun is supposed to be so far away behind the moon, how is it still, you know, how is the moon reflecting the sun's light if the sun is so far back and the moon's facing us? Like no. this picture kind of supports the flat earth yeah. theory that, um, so you know, the moon's its own light. Can I Pretty sure that's photoshopped. I am just reverse. I was, was going to say, I was going to say, what's the history of this photo? Like, uh, did somebody take? I don't this know, photo man. That you know, or... <laughs> but apparently, <laughs> because, I mean, you can see yeah, it from clearly, across, you know, okay, from around right. the world. So, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, here is the original photo, which is actually from an Adobe stock footage, which is itself. Oh, damn! That's a, not coming through as a HTML picture. Um, sorry, let me get that up. Right, so uh, the original image is actually from Adobe Stock, and that should say it was a JPEG. There we go. Um, is admitted on the Adobe site that I just went to that it's a Photoshop. Not only that, but that's not even the original color. This is the original color of it. Um, yep, yep. And you know, it says on the site this is this is a Photoshop stock footage. So a flat earth yeah, yeah. Just man. Hey, I, I, I'm telling you, I hate to get on a soapbox about this, but this is the type of deceit you will find from uh -huh. a flat earth, uh, from someone who promotes the flat earth, not from someone who's asking yeah. questions about it. Okay. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that you don't promote stuff like this, but this is promoted to people who are gullible, people who won't ask questions, who will just see something like that and go, wow. This this obviously is impossible on a on a globe Earth. Well, hell yeah, it's impossible. That's why it's a photoshopped image. It's the number one thing they complain about to us. That it's Photoshop. It's Photoshop. It's Photoshopped. And then they turn around and they see these Photoshop Photoshop photos. Images. Yeah. yeah. Um, is the the thing is, work, the photo might right. be photoshopped, but it's it's a definite thing that you can see a full moon in the sky at certain times. You know, because yeah. it's going through its 30-day cycle. right? And here's and the that, thing, right? that'll be what the sun's when, in the air, too. Whenever you see a, uh, a moon in the sky and the sun at the same yeah. time, right? Um, it, it's never going to be a completely full moon, right? There's always going to be a little bit of a shadow, right? What you want to do is get a, a golf ball, a ping pong ball, or a football, or whatever, and just hold it out at arm's length, okay? And look at the shadow. Look at the shape of the shadow that is on that ball because of where the sun is. And then look at the moon and you will see exactly the same shape because they're relatively in the same position compared to where the sun is. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, exactly. That's, that's another, one thing uh, you can, so, that's one, a, a little unknown test that anybody can really do is that if, if the earth and if let's say the sun and moon are, are local objects, right? Well, then that means that there's a severely different geometry between a golf ball you're holding in your hand in relation to the sun than the moon in relation to the sun. So basically, let's say what? one person on one side of the earth should see a full moon, another person on the other side of the earth should see the back side of the moon. You know what I'm saying? Like you never do, you never see that. You always see the same shape of the moon. Every person on earth always okay. sees the well, same the, shape. The, of the, the flat, moon. The flat the earthers ball. believe that, you know, the moon isn't they're, they're not physical tangible objects maybe. Like um Oh, I, I don't know. Um, so one of the first flat earthers I ever spoke to, um, who actually comes from your, your neck of the words, flat earth Aussie Jesus, told me that the moon, um, you might want to sit down for this, actually. He said that the moon was dug out of the Grand Canyon by giants, melted into quartz, filled with helium whilst it was still cool, which is why there's craters and bubbles popped, 
put in the sky to mock us for worshipping the, the, the sun. And the sun's an interdimensional portal. This is the kind of people that believe in the flat earth. Flat out fucking... You're right. <laughs> not, yeah, but that's not everybody, you know what I mean? I, I think a lot of people, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of people the last year especially have, like, you know, jumped on it because of, you know, the smaller proofs, not like, you know, the, the curvature. But that, not everyone believes that, you know, like, pretty much stories that, how can you even validate that? You know what I mean? How, how can you... How did he arrive at that conclusion? <laughs> how how do you arrive at the conclusion that you have a heart? That I have a heart. Yeah. That that. How does any flat earther ever arrive at the conclusion that they have a heart? Yeah, because you can feel your heartbeat. Um, no, you I can guess feel a pressure. You can feel a pressure change. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. But how do you know that that's your heart? Have you ever opened yourself up and looked at your heart and to make sure that it is actually no, but, a heart but that you beats can, there? But, but, you know, we know everybody else has a heart. I mean, you can open up an animal and find their heart. It's just, you know, th there's evidence that there's, there's hearts in everybody. Okay, or but, else uh, all right, all right. Hey, hey, great. No, 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 no. Hey, I appreciate you answering that way because that leads me to another point. If we can open up other animals, right, and we can see that they have hearts and we can infer that through the many different mammals that we dissect – that they all have hearts, that we must have a heart too, then why can we not use that same logic to say, shit, we see all the planets going around the sun, we see the Galilean moons going around Jupiter, we look out and everywhere we see we in the universe, we it's dominated by gravity. We can literally use this to predict things, right, at this point. Why should we then say, come back and say that all these observations do not apply to Earth? We don't have gravity here, even though moons are going around jupiter planets are going around the sun no. our moon goes around us i, I get you but exist. but what what i'm trying to say is like you know we have the formula for gravity and then you give them you give it you give a form you give a um you know a certain weight to the sun for example and then you can start working backwards and state saying you know saturn is rotating it like that because the mass is this and it's this distance away and it's kind of like making it work backwards you know what I mean? Like, okay, let's say let's say we did that, right? Let's say we use the the Galilean moons of Jupiter uh, and, and the observation that Jupiter goes around the sun. Okay, let's say we go. Okay, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a mass for the sun, so therefore we can only get a certain mass for the for Jupiter, right? Because Jupiter makes yep. a a path around the sun that we we can visually track from Earth. Okay. So we say, all right, yep. so the Jupiter goes around, it takes this period of time, therefore Jupiter's mass must be this because because the sun's mass, we've determined the sun's mass to be A, so Jupiter's mass must be B for it to properly make this orbit according to the laws of gravity. So let's say we're trying to fit yeah, the yeah. law of gravity here, right? So we would, we would say that if, if the law of gravity said something else, well, that would change the mass of Jupiter because we've already defined what the mass of the sun to be. But then we look at the moons of Jupiter, yeah. and we see the moons of Jupiter going around Jupiter the way they do. And they adhere to the laws of gravity based on the weight on the mass of Jupiter that we gave it based on the mass of, sun, of the sun that we are, are, have defined the sun to have. And it all works out. Yeah. The gravity, so you're saying that the moons the actually look like they're going around Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. And any any person, so, in fact, they're named the Galilean moons because Galileo first noticed them from Earth or documented them from Earth. All right, so I've got a, I've got a question now. Um, okay. It's kind of related. We see Earth, we see the sun and the moon appear at the exact same size pretty much at an eclipse, yeah? Uh-huh. Um, you know what? That's one of the reasons flat earthers say, like, you know, they are the same size. That's what we see. But if you were on Jupiter and you looked at an eclipse, would the moon line up at the exact same size as the sun? No, not at all. Like not you, at all. In fact, no, there's so, pictures so, of uh, there's pictures of the moon passing over portions of Jupiter, and you can see okay, the eclipse so, so occurring on the surface I, of Jupiter. I know, I know this isn't proof that they are the same size, but it is a pretty massive coincidence that they would appear at the same size during a, during an eclipse. You know what I mean? For it to be perfectly 400 times further and, and bigger. Like, I'm not saying that's proof that that's not, they're not, that's not the case, but I think flat earthers are trying to say, like, wait a minute, like, 
really but, like okay. how, how is it so how is it so right, perfectly so, so here so it's not perfect right um in fact there's different eclipses that show the sun to be different sizes bigger than the moon mm -hmm. uh an annular eclipse i believe is what it's called when uh the that's the ring of fire eclipse that's when the moon is further when an eclipse happens while the moon is furthest away from the earth and it causes the moon to be the smallest with the sun being the largest they are not the same size in our our sky no matter how close they appear to be the same size from us no, no. As i know people, they're not the exact using same our size, eyes yeah. yeah using our eyes it really does appear that they are the same size but when you pull out uh, when you take use solar filters and use better equipment than what our eyes are then you end up having you know you end up seeing that the sun is bigger than the moon i know it's bigger but what i'm trying to say is it's pretty close do you know what i mean like that those equipment will show that it's like in the ring of fire <laughs> for and sure. eclipse for sure but they're not they're, like like it's still pretty coincidental that they're that close in size you know but these coincidences like i'm sure other planets when they have an eclipse they are no, it's nowhere size. near that close in size I mean, I I wouldn't know. Uh, it would depend on the angular size of the Galilean moons from Jupiter's surface. I mean, I'm sure somebody's figured it out before, but I wouldn't know without. Doing it really the is just a big coincidence that from our position, the yep. moon and the sun appear the same size. All right, and you know, yes, that is something that seems like outside of the realms of you know what odds should give you, but it's a fact. Uh, and yeah. you know, from uh, other positions in the solar system, their eclipses would look different. You know, Jupiter's got a bunch of moons all at different sizes. I'm sure from the surface of Jupiter, there is hundreds of eclipses e every every month. But you know, yeah, they're, they're going to be all different sizes, and you know, it's going to look completely different as it would from Earth. Yeah, yeah. But um, when you're thinking about eclipses, you know, explain a solar eclipse on a flat earth solar eclipse yeah how, how does that work look i i don't think flat earthers can can give a i mean they can give you theories but their whole thing is that it's a closed system and that we can't actually go to space there's a firmament or whatever you want to call it and we can't literally go there and see for ourselves so you know like they're kind of saying that it's not it's not in our realm of physicality to even explain it. If that Don't makes sense. Don't you find that fucking it's, awfully convenient, though? I mean, forget. It the, is, but I mean, you, you know, it is, but I mean, that, that by itself, that sounds ridiculous. But the fact that you know, I think it's they're building a picture out of all the you know the fact that we can't go back out of low Earth orbit. All the photos are photoshopped. They can take photos of Saturn, but they can only like. And I'm not trying to say that I, I'm. This is proof, but. They're painting a picture that I kind of understand where they're coming from as well. Um, to, to you know, to come to a conclusion that that could be the case. I mean, I've seen also photos with the moon when you can see stars behind it. I don't know if they're fake, but I mean, know. they're normally like, not when stars you, on, behind but, it. To be honest, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah I was going to say wait. just like bits of dirt on the camera or like reflections of light dead pixels yeah there's i mean so many different so uh different uh we, different we, reasons for why you would see an artifact in a video we, we've talked a lot about um you know body, bodies that we can see from earth that, that are in space now do you know how we discovered uranus uh is that the one where is it uranus where they didn't know where it was and um they didn't know there was uranus and then they they one planet one of the you know wandering stars or planet or whatever it is it was said that they it was making a unexpected you know the astronomer saw it wasn't it wasn't um yeah, yeah moving so as expected so maybe we, there was something yeah, else we, pulling we it in we were watching neptune all right we were watching the orbit of neptune and there was one point in neptune's orbit where it did some crazy shit that didn't make any sense all right so yep. we did some maths based on what it was doing all right and the math said that there is a body at this position that is creating a gravitational influence, which has given us these perturbations. Um, yeah, and that was in the 1800s, yeah? No, I'm doing it the wrong way around. It's Neptune that we discovered, not Uranus, sorry. Um, 
but yeah, so they, they, they saw the, the perturbations in the orbit, and then they did some maths, right? And they said, right, okay, so if gravity's real and our maths is correct, we should find something if we look at this point in the sky. And they looked at that point in yeah, the I've... sky, and they dis they discovered Neptune. You know, no, I've, I've, I actually to, to saw really, that for the first time really... the other day. It's just, can you find, like, you know, like, Flat Earthers are saying now that, you know, all these people that supposedly do these experiments, like Newton and this guy, are, are Freemasons and it's all bogus. I'm not trying to say that, I, I'm, you know, I can prove that, but is, like, yeah. is there actual maths released to prove that that's what he did? Like, is, you know, is the information available to show, like, how we calculated it, or is it just that we? Uh, just I'm pretty sure the take that on board. Are, I'm pretty sure the original journals are available. Uh, and yeah, sorry, I, I've got it the wrong way around. We used Uranus to discover Neptune, not yeah. not, not Neptune to discover Uranus. Um, I was going to insert yeah. a funny Uranus joke, but <laughs> I, I decided not to. Bella Charge second. says they discovered Uranus because I bent over. Thank you, Bella Charge. Love you too. I went in for an infection check, and they <laughs> discovered my anus. <laughs> um yeah so you know i'm pretty sure the journals are available to do to, to find that uh to, to show you what what they they did but it's something that couldn't be reverse engineered right and it kind of covers all your points yeah. it covers like observations it covers evidence it it, it 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 covers every base there isn't anything more empirical than looking yeah. at something making an observation using that observation to make a prediction and that prediction being correct i mean it, it is one of yeah. the most um empirical evidences that we, that we can present the equations for that would have had to be pretty complex yeah Some... well yeah you had to use um, a lot of uh, kepler's laws and, and newton's laws uh, of motion and, and newton's laws of gravitational attraction you know, we had the, all all of the the maths around orbital mechanics would have had to have been taken into account. And yeah, it's not was like, Kepler the one that. Sorry, go on. Was it Kepler the one that invent, that um discovered it? Was it actually Kepler that discovered it? I'm not entirely sure who did the observation. Uh, okay, I think it might have been. Discovered Neptune. Um. No, uh, it, it was a prediction by uh, Ubrain Lavier. Ah, uh, uh, okay, yeah. But he he used the work of Kepler and you know, and Newton's laws and stuff to make that prediction, you know, and the prediction yeah. came true. Okay. Um, all right. Next one. I'm, I've got, I've sent you another photo with the hot spot. So I see this one quite a bit. Um, how is the sun so far away? If there's a hot spot right under it. Uh, and also, there's other photos with the clouds behind the sun. Right. Clouds behind the sun is, is easily explained, but we'll do the other one first. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Team, you, you're usually better at explaining the hotspot point. Team, you there? Uh, I think he's gone. Team Skeptic, where'd you go? He's probably broken his mic. <laughs> um, he's got a new system and it, it does that sometimes. Right, so basically what you're seeing is a reflection off of water. Um, I'm pretty sure that they, they figured out the where this is and there's like a lake, a, a lake there. And it's just a reflection off of, off of the water that you're seeing. So it's not the sun causing a hotspot? Well, it's, it's not a hot spot. That's the thing. It's a reflection. Um, and, you know, Whoa. I don't know what else to say about it. That's, that's the only uh, team usually ex explains it better. I, I don't know where he's gone right now. But no, it's, it's just a reflection. And uh, you can if you held any mirror underneath a light source that's far away, you'd be able to see a spot where that light was reflecting from. It's, and it, that's all it is. I'm pretty sure that there is, there's either a lake or the, the edge of an ocean there, and it's just the light reflecting off the through a cloud break off of the water, and that's what you're seeing. But if that's the dog cam, it's um, yeah, it is the the dog cam is a great one for proving that the Earth is 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 in fact curved. Um, 
Okay, so it's a misleading photo, is that what you're saying? Not necessarily a misleading photo, a misunderstood photo. Misleading is in it, how, like the caption saying it's a hotspot. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's just a flatter for trying to, you know, make something out for what it really isn't. Uh, okay, so um, this is footage from that balloon flight, the, the dog cam. And the great thing about this footage is that it shows that the earth is curved. Uh, they've taken a shot from it and compressed it left to right. And on the right, you can see that it shows that there's a curve. And there's two cameras on the dog cam, one that has lens distortion and one that doesn't. Um, and they show the, yeah, they show the two cameras and the one that has the lens distortion, this one, when it goes, yeah, yeah, it above goes and below the center yeah, point, yeah, yeah. goes concave, but the other one, um, doesn't do that. Oh, sugar. I don't know what I just did there. And the other one shows a slight curve. You're saying, yeah. And how high was that? Uh, not 140,000 feet possibly. I'm not entirely sure okay. of the exact, uh, distance. Alright, um, so, I've asked you before, I think, about the moon. Yeah. Um, you know, the cold light and that, and, um, I haven't done it for myself or anything, but I've asked a couple people, and they reckon that the effect is m more pronounced on a, uh, on a, on a full moon compared to just a partial moon. Like, it gets more and more pronounced depending on, you know, how, how much of the moon is in the sky. Sorry, say that again. Are you saying that... So, you know, I think I've asked you once on Messenger and you answered about, um, oh, the, you know, the, cool the moon. House. Yeah, yeah. So the moon having a cold light is one of the, the Flat Earthers' proofs. Yeah. The uh, problem with that is that Flat Earthers also like to try and quote the second law of thermodynamics. Um uh, as you know, or you can't have a, a gas pressure next to a, a vacuum due to the second law of thermodynamics. Whereas cold light is a direct violation of the second law of thermodynamics. Um, light simply doesn't work that way. Light is energy. Uh, it's waves. Yeah. And it, it can't be cold. It simply can't. There is no way that... So it can't be can a cold be light. No. It, 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 physics simply doesn't work that way. It would literally be reversing entropy. Yeah, light. Okay, so there's no momentum. like there's no yeah, lights out there that they can create that. No. Know, well, um, there is cause, something cause, called late. There is something called laser cooling, but that's not cold lasers. What they do is they they use high intensity lasers um, directed a, a bunch of different directions onto something to reduce its atomic movement. Uh, but no, there is okay. no such thing as cold light. It simply doesn't exist. So cold. So light's always heating. Yeah, light's energy. It can't be cold. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it would have to have a negative momentum. Um, yeah, to be cold. So, um, what was the answer then to why it's colder out in the, not in the moon shade? You are saying it's not even the moon at all? It's a. Uh... No, it's it's not the moon. It's the fact that there is an open sky. So during the day, uh, yeah. the, the, the sun imparts energy onto the earth. All right. Every, every, every square meter is receiving energy from the sun. Um, when it's yeah. nighttime and that energy stops being received, that energy is emitted back into space. You know, away, yeah. you know, even on a flat earth, right? It, the energy would be emitted away from the ground. Now, if yeah. you have some, so say this glass was emitting energy, but there's something above it, right? Not a, less of the energy is gonna be able to escape, which means that this yeah. would be warmer. But if there's nothing above it, it's an open sky, whether there's a moon or not, that energy is allowed to escape, yeah. which means that this would be colder. So that's why in okay. the moon shade, things appear to be warmer than in the moonlight. It's called radiative cooling. Yeah. So, so those claims made by the flat earth is that it, the radiative cooling or, you know, whatever it is cooling is more pronounced on a full moon than a partial moon. Are they just, um, are they just making no, it up? Or? There's, no, there's no evidence of no, that. No, no, Abs no. Absolutely not. No, no, okay. So they choose a full moon because that's when the moon is, when more of the moon is exposed, more cold light comes, the, um, the effect is uh, more pronounced, but it's not. 
Uh, in fact, there's been several people in our community that have already d have done actual experiments with controls to show that as the moonlight sweeps across temperature sensors, the temperature sensors do not drop in temperature. That was where's Wally? Uh, wasn't it it? remained the same. Yeah, where's Wally? Okay. So it was a fake. It was a fake. Um, it's not, not necessarily that a just, yeah, it's, understood. It, it's a misunderstanding of physics, yeah. No, 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 I mean, I'm talking about the claims that they did the experiment on a full moon compared to a partial moon and, and it was colder. No, you know, I've, the honestly, was, was... I've honestly never seen that to be the case. I've heard many flat earthers claim it, including Howard, hashtag stop censoring Howard. Um, uh, but no, I've never seen any evidence that there is extra cooling when there's a moon. Um, you're going to get different results from day to day, right? If there's a slight cloud cover, you're going to get slightly less energy being emitted. You know, everything is going to change what, what, what is happening. You know, every bit of weather change, every bit of cloud cover, every breeze, you know, it's all going to affect what you're measuring. So it might be quite easy to go out and measure a colder temperature when there's more of a moon. But that's, that's, co that's just random correlation. You know, that's, correlation doesn't equal causation. Okay. Uh, you there? Team, he's gone away. Yeah. Um, well, that sucks. He's still in the Zoom call. Jordy, you there, bud? He had probably hadn't left. He I'm there. Can left. you hear oh, me? Oh, 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 yeah. There we go. You're back now. Yeah, yeah, so did you hear what I said about Bill Nye? No, sorry, I missed that. So so apparently there's a video where he says that it's a closed system and he really wants the generation to embrace that <laughs> yeah. we're not going to leave Earth because it's a closed system and all that. Why would he say that, especially when, you know, all these he's not private corporations about, are, are not saying that we're not going to, you know, that it's, we're yeah. going to leave Earth? It's a complete quote mine. He's not even talking about space. He's talking about, like, the general state of the world. Uh, and it's honestly just a complete misquote uh, and no, sorry, a, a complete quote mine. He's really not. Okay, so he's not even talking about leaving Earth in, in physically. No, not necessarily. And um, but he says it's a closed system. Like that sounds. Let me. Like how? What? Where, how? What would that be hey, talking was he about? Not, the state I don't of know the world. He, he. Well, he might have been talking about something like uh, climate change. I mean, it could have been if he was speaking on that, then he could have been t talking about, you know, the the effects of humans are all within this this uh, this our atmosphere and whatnot because it's a closed system. It's it's literally closed off to the to space. You know, there's a a point at which our atmosphere stops. I mean, it, I don't it, know. It, it, it it's slightly, I'm pretty. I'm pretty but, sure he even says I, and I'm not, we literally I'm not cannot sure leave the earth. Right, okay, all right. I'm pretty right. sure he says we cannot leave so, the earth. So um, here's here's the entire quote. All right. Um, in the Q and A, Bill and I gave his opinion on why we cannot throw our trash into space. Uh, flat Earthers took Bill's words <laughs> out of context and used it to disprove spaceflight. So Bill says, "Why don't why don't we throw trash into space? It's too expensive. Lifting a ton of material into space takes an extraordinary amount of rocket fuel." When people want to send this much plutonium to 38, which is not even the weapons plutonium, people freak out because the rockets blow up sometime. One thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. There's no place to throw your trash. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe not you, but your kids develop ways to mine our landfills. Uh, Bill Nye is a space colonization skeptic. He does not believe space colonization is realistic. It does not mean he thinks we cannot go to space. In another Q&A, he said we need to have a presence on Mars for research purposes. So it's just completely taken out of context. Taken out of context. Have, have you seen the one with yeah. Buzz Aldrin and a little girl asked him um, oh God, yeah. why, why, <laughs> why we can't go back to the moon or something? And then it sounds like he says we never went. And he's like, and if we didn't, why do we... No, we have right. to ask why uh, again, we Again, that's, that's that a quote mine, similar? right? But, uh, he's spending that entire thing talking about going to the moon, right? And the little girl asks, well, wh why haven't we gone back? And he says, well, that, that's, that's my question, you know? Um, if, 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 we, if we didn't go there, you know, if we didn't go back, what, why hasn't that been done? 
he's not saying that they never went there. He's talking about why they never went back and how that is a big question. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah, because yeah. we still need to explore and stuff. Again, it's the entire conversation is, is the dude telling the girl that he was on the moon, you know? And Plus, they, he's pretty old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like he he's not like a young yeah, yeah, yeah. Like us that can <laughs> that heck that have so like it's, it's, he doesn't know how to he doesn't energetic he, he, he kind of miss and he's speaking yeah yeah look who he's speaking to I mean he may be speaking down to her level so that she can understand you know better you know from like he can't go into the specifics well you know like if you really take the cost per dollar you know a rocket fuel to send for each pound up in space you know you come out to this amount right here and that just doesn't seem feasible. No, it's not like that. He just he's talking down to a level that she will com you know, comprehend. Yeah. Um All right. Um I'll move I'll move it in a different direction. I I'm trying to find a meme. You guys have you guys heard about the Captain Cook voyage and how it how it apparently um he clocked over 50,000 kilometers and it took him over 3 years and all that. Yeah, it's all just nonsense. Like honestly, all of these memes and flat earth claims are either straight up lies or misunderstandings, misrepresentations of basic things that happened. Okay. Um, so Captain Cook's voyage wasn't wasn't around the south. Is that what you're saying? Or I mean, I I, I know he didn't go the exact way that he meant to, but it certainly. He, it's, it's not like he circumnavigated an entire ice wall. You know, that, that wasn't... No, no, no. He, I haven't seen the claim that he circumnavigated an ice wall. It was, like, further in than the ice wall. Um, but he did find the ice wall at times, apparently, and there was no paths. And they say that just, you know, circumnavigating, you know, from east to west or whatever around the south took him so, so long. And if... You know, if it was the bottom of the globe, it shouldn't. You know, it shouldn't have been that that many kilometers. Well, the the and number they're, the number they're quoting is for the entire voyage that he did, not just that one section. So again, they're kind of misrepresenting what's being said. Um, and as Bella Charge just said, for two New Zealand dollars, Captain Cook found New Zealand for the British. Um, then we discovered hobbits. What? Well, that's where hobbits come from, right? New Zealand. Really? God. Dude, I'm making a Lord of the Rings joke. Did they... Oh. <laughs> so you're not... I, I, thought maybe, I thought you meant like the myth actually originated in New Zealand. Or no, 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 no. I'm just making <laughs> no, a joke you mean, like, New Zealand is literally Middle Earth. Yeah. <laughs> R slash whoosh. That I was going to say that'd be weird. Maori hobbits. <laughs> That's yeah. why Planner Walk is the way he is with his pointy ears and his little lady haircut. I'm surprised that he's, he's so skinny, though, over the second breakfasts. <laughs> uh, but, right, um, we're going to start wrapping this up. Uh, I've got quite a few super chats to read Yeah, that's out. fine. Um, is there any final questions that, that, you, that you might have? Uh, honestly, this has been a refreshing conversation, and I know that you have said that you, you, you're more just asking questions. Uh, which is an intellectually yeah. honest position to hold, right? There is never anything wrong with asking questions and being a skeptic, but it's when that turns into denialism that it becomes a problem. And honestly, yeah, I, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah, go on, team. I have something to add to that um, because I've been trying to pay attention a lot to your mannerisms and whatnot throughout the night. I like to, I like to kind of psychologically understand somebody so I can better understand their position and many many times tonight over and over and over when referring to flat earthers use the word they instead of we would you I don't think you're a po meaning I don't think you're out here to intentionally fool us into believing you're a flat earther but are you an actual no. flat earther okay look I mean, that's at least an honest <laughs> answer not an honest answer look until recently I would have said I was a 98% flat earther now I'm 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 open. Like I don't really know. Do you know what I mean? Like a, a lot of that's the things that the I see don't make sense in the globe theory. But you guys have showed that, you know, maybe some of the science actually does prove curvature and rotation. And if that's the case, then, you know, that throws out the claims of the flat Earth movement that there is no proof of it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, this yeah, this, there's but, no like, evidence. 
it's what I always lead with, um, is one simple thing, right? There is measurements of the Earth's radius. There is measurements of the Earth's rotation. But no flat earther has ever been able to show me a measurement of the Earth being flat or stationary. And that ends the conversation. They're saying that you don't need to. Yeah, I get you. I get you. If, you, if you've got the proof of the rotation, then yeah. Um, look, I, I, I don't know what, if the Earth is round or flat. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to say I'm, I'm sure either way. And that's fine, you know, that, that, that's fine, all right? You aren't denying that it could be a globe. You aren't denying that it could possibly be flat. And that is a position we do not mind people holding. We'd like to be able to help you along the way. Um, I mean, I'm sure Team would love to get you back on, maybe onto his channel. We can, have, we can uh, carry on the conversation. Um, because, right, a lot of what we do here on YouTube is taking the mick out of idiots, right? And most flat earthers are idiots. But at the back of it, there is what we're trying to do is help people understand basic things. Yeah. And if we can help you understand something that you maybe are unsure of, then I feel like I've done a good job. There is many people in yep. this community, um, PhDs, uh, PhD Tony is one guy who's coming recently, who is extremely knowledgeable about gravity and stuff. He, he uses it in his profession. You know, he, 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 there is a, he talks about industries that use gravity and how they use gravity. And he's extremely knowledgeable on, on things like that. And I think having a conversation between you and someone like him could be even more beneficial yeah. than talking to team and I, you know, no, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just a daughter with, with, a, with a bachelor's degree and uh, team has an, a really you know great knowledge of, of like uh, general relativity, special relativity and, and some quantum mechanics. But we're just dullards compared to half the people that are here. And if we can help you um, and arrange a conversation between a PhD that can help explain things to you, we will do that for you. Team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so any, any final questions that you have uh, before I read the Super Chats? Um, um, I'll, I'll just leave with a quick one because it probably won't take you long to explain. Um, you know how there's the, 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 um, the photos with the sunlight coming from the clouds and it's, you know, they use geometry to show that it's, it's a local light because the, you know. Yes, corpuscular rays. Yes. Corpuscular the converging, rays. yeah, the converging angles. Um, you know, they're saying that if the sun was far away, the, the, angle, the light would be coming, um, you know, straight down. So um, where I live in Fife, uh, where I showed you the photos from earlier, right, that's the Firth of Forth. And either side of that, there's mountains, okay? So I get the most amazing cloud breaks here. And what you'll find as you are driving past the cloud breaks, you see the sun, the, the combustion rays coming through, and they look like they're heading towards you. But then as you drive past, they then diverge and then they follow you going the other way. It's purely perspective. Yeah. It is purely based on it's you seeing yeah. where you are coming through a cloud at, yeah. You will never be able to get uh, to, to do that and actually map out where the sun is because it would always say that the sun is literally just, you know, a few hundred feet up in the clouds. And, and we know that isn't the case. Pilots would have to avoid yeah, and it. <laughs> also, also, if you think about it let's say the best way to, to to debunk all that is to go okay that ray right there looks like it comes down in the middle of the the lake let's say you're at a lake right and you or or you could be in a field or anywhere it would for your from your perspective it will look like a ray comes through the cloud and hits the ground at a certain spot ask a friend to go on yeah. the other side of that spot and look back and see if he sees the same crepuscular ray coming from the same location and he yeah. will because as he moves, the sun will always still appear to be in front of him. He'll never outrun the sun because the sun is hundreds of millions of, of uh, kilometers away. You know, so... Yes. I mean, it's just a way to check that. No, it's, it's, a, it's an optical illusion yeah. that, that confuses people. Just like train tracks right. that are parallel to each other appear to converge, they never do. No. No matter how far away yeah, they yeah. go. No matter how close they look like they get together. If you had a powerful enough uh, camera or telescope to zoom in, or let's say it was perfectly flat in space, you say, oh, wow, they mm -hmm. must have come together because there's no way watching them they've not crossed yet. Well, if you pulled out a telescope, you'd mm -hmm. always see that they are still parallel to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, yeah, makes sense. I'd like say, Jordy, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. You're welcome to hang around while I read out the super chats. Um, sometimes they can be a bit mean to flat earthers, but honestly, you've been. Yeah, it's all right, man. Like, <laughs> no, no. I, I, it's, I not that, think... it's not that I'll get offended, but <laughs> I'd better head out too. All right, well, um, stay in contact and we will arrange to get you back and ha have a chat with PhD Tony, maybe on Team Skeptics channel. I think that could be a great conversation. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for showing respect yeah. and being a decent person. No problem. You too. Speak to you later. Bye. Well, that was a breath of bloody fresh air, fresh air, wasn't it, team? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind having conversations like that um, because that's where someone, like not just the person that's talking to you is is going to learn something, but other people in the audience might learn a thing or two yeah. uh, that they might have had questions about. So uh, it's a much more productive um productive conversation for sure yeah i think everybody still smells of lighter fluid because everybody got ready and <laughs> sprayed their hands down to get their hands nice and well dirty. if you want a dumpster fire just... victor's back on um mc tunes tomorrow i believe <clears throat> oh fuck yeah uh, i might try and crash that actually because victor's basically running away from me at this point uh af after our conversation last night team uh or on your channel whenever that was he sent me um about another 150 messages well, he'd block me, unblock me, send me a bunch, and then block me again. And he sent me a screenshot of him. He learned that from me. <laughs> yeah. He sent me a screenshot of him reporting your channel to YouTube for using the Scout Badge um, brand icon and claiming it as your own. <laughs> <laughs> That's my shit, Victor. <laughs> yeah, I uh, preemptively wrote uh, the Queen. To, add, to let her know I was sorry for disrespecting <laughs> the scouts, the, the, the UK scouts. Uh, I, d I did do that. Just maybe, hopefully, she won't cancel my channel. No. Uh, please, Queen. Yeah, I, please I think don't tell be Bezos. <laughs> right, oh, wait, that's, that's Amazon. <laughs> let's read the super chats and get out of here for tonight. I've had a great time, guys. Um, look, I, I, I know a bunch of you are super chatting, and that is amazing. It's how I'm able to continue doing this. And it means the world that you are so generous and you're, you're willing to support me with your super chats and your membership and your Patreon. Um, but another way to help support this channel, in fact, one of the best ways is to, to leave a like on this video and to share it on um, Nathan Thompson's Facebook page, especially. But sharing the stuff that, that me and team do as much as you can is honestly one of the best ways to help our channels grow. You know, more people see our stuff when you put it on Facebook. I get about 40% of my views coming from Facebook, as in uh, outside of YouTube. 40% of them come directly from Facebook. And I don't post that much on Facebook, so that's you guys doing it. So if you are able to share on Twitter, on Facebook, or any other social networks, please do. But Super Chats... Yo, yo. Yo. There? Yeah, I'm here. Oh my god, I had an internet hit up that just completely kicked me off of the internet for 30 seconds and let me right back on oh well we're still here i was just um asking everyone to share and saying thank you for being awesome so ranger man 9404 for five dollars says since i know a flurf is incoming i offer this one preemptive ding um i don't feel like we had to use yeah. the ding in much there did we uh no i think there was a couple of times i can't remember specifically I'd have to go back and watch it where I was like, I could have dinged him because <laughs> he was he was offering a pretty illogical argument. But that's also one of the reasons why I asked him, you know, are you an actual flat earther? I don't think he's a Pope. No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. he was here to to uh, to to confuse us. But definitely there were some times when I could have dinged him for some of the things he said. Um, and he, he <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I think I might, I'm going to retitle this um, How to Debunk Flat Earth 101 because I felt like it was going through every Flat Earth talking point one by one and I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, Frankie Fish yeah. for five Oh, years. and then, oh, yeah, hey, I want to say when you were talking to me and I couldn't respond, I was actually talking with my son. I'd muted oh, my right. mic okay. and I heard you talking in the back. I was like, fuck, they're asking me. I got to get back in there. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just checking you were okay. Um, but no, no yeah. you know, obviously family comes first. Frankie Fish for five euros says, "Crafty Kida, do you think this will get uh, this will get enough popcorn for everyone?" Um, I'm not buying you all popcorn. That's a lot of popcorn. <laughs> There's been like six hundred of you watching. <laughs> Crafty Kida for five euros says, "Frankie Fish, between us both, we got this." 
Well, if you want popcorn, just ask Crafty Kila. Rampant for 2,500 claps says, Did you guys saw the news on Venus? They found a phosphorus <laughs> sig signal, which points to bacterial life being there. Nothing certain, but it may be ET life. Yeah, uh, I did read briefly uh, that. I'm going to look into it more. But um, phosphorus is one of the you know, big building blocks of life. And if we're finding that there, then there could be something there. But uh, honestly, the, the conditions on Venus, um, it's the hottest kind of surface temperature of all the, the planets in the solar system because the atmosphere is so incredibly dense. We, we would, if we were to stand on Venus, we would be crushed to death by the atmosphere with how dense and hot it is. Um, yeah, so, but extremophiles, extremophiles yeah, do still have the opportunity to live there. Like, yeah, we can find extremophiles living around the volcanic vents and stuff. So, yeah, you're right. There could be. Um, who knows? And evolution's an incredible thing. So, Crafty Kira for five euros says, Welcome to FTFE. The channel that does the Flat Earthers, what you should do to that like button. Smash the like button, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sigma Step for $10 uh, says, Best online community ever. Thanks so much to Craig and team and PhD Tony. Johnny O rules too. Jessica G is kind of okay, I, I guess. Thank you very much. A little uh, bit. I'm, yeah. I do love this community as well. Every single one of you. You're, you're all amazing. Um, Alien X Gaming for $5 says, Finally a flat earther that is showing interest in other theories. That is awesome. Yep, yeah, really enjoyed that conversation. Thank you, Jordy, for being intellectually honest. And another $5 from Alien X Gaming says, Is it possible to convert live? This man is on the verge of being, Oops, my bad. I don't think it's going to take much for us to, to save Jordy, honestly. Uh, General E. Shady for $2 says, Look south from three different countries. Stars are the same. Absolutely. Kills the flat earth. Better charge for five New Zealand dollars. What's up, skip bitch? And what's up, pork chop? <laughs> what up? <laughs> whoop, whoop. Thank you, better charge. Um, and uh, I haven't received the item yet, but I'm sure it will be here over the next couple of days. Irish Demon for $4.49 Australian. Good day, you, you spexy beast. PhD Tony says hashtag barmp. Uh, what's that stand for? Uh, oh, I can't remember what the BA uh, RPM stands for. Someone remind me what that stands either. for. <laughs> um, Robert Williams for $4.99 says, If Polaris disappeared from distance, then astrophotographers near the equator would need longer exposure to capture Polaris than people further north. Facts. Robert Williams for $4.99. The people in the documentary afflicted sued the makers of the documentary for defamation. If behind the curve lied, why no lawsuit? Uh, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, Illuminous Poo for $5 says, still seeking nemesis. I'm into hiking and kayaking by day. Justice and vengeance by night. Deformed megalomaniac or crime lord preferred. I can be an evil um, baddie if you like. I, I, I'd quite like to have a, a nemesis relationship with someone. You know, kind of uh, mm -hmm. a, Ma a Magneto, Professor X kind of relationship. Yeah, I'll be your evil villain. NA, NA for $6.66, Hail Sagan says, I take what PhD Tony says as gospel, Hail Satan. Well, PhD Tony is the closest thing we have to God. Kalepsis for $5 says, this has to be one of the least dumpstery fire Monday nights in FTFE history. Definitely, you are right. Illuminous Pooh for $2 100%. says... Yeah, Jaws did it first. Yeah, that um, field of view change is actually mind blowing. How much it can change stuff. I might have a play. That's about why. It. I, yeah. That's why I'm telling you something. That's why I don't even talk optics. I'm so ignorant to it. Yeah. That if someone said, you know, look at the size of the grass to nose ratio, and I would have originally just without knowing any better would have said, well, no matter where you move, that ratio will always be the same. If you move away, you can calculate. The difference between the two but only if the field of view was the same in both pictures and i mean there's just now i understand like there's so much that goes into optics and anybody that's like a, a specialty in photography or whatnot shh, good on you uh -huh. because there's just so much fucking shit to understand yeah. that, and i'm so ignorant of it that i don't even want to I don't, I don't present optic evidence like that nor do i accept it unless they, they've got some kind of documentation with it and I can have a professional look at the documentation because I can't understand that shit. Um, Gary Webanenga in the chat, you do not get to talk in my chat until we have debated live. My mods have full permission to time you out if the message you send is not, here is my email, contact me for debate. Stop being a little keyboard warrior. Do what the Flat River today did. Step up 
and ask questions about your beliefs. Gary, hold on. Gary, Gary, listen. We're not asking you to come on camera or expose yourself like uh, you can even put a voice changer on if you want. Uh -huh. So that way nobody knows that it's now. you. I can do that Did you know the fucking um, Stream Deck can do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can just put voice changers on anyone. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Gary. But stop, what I'm saying is just that... Yeah, I mean, like, there, you can you could tell uh fight hey it's me gary i'll have this discussion with you but what i'm going to do is i don't want you to say it's me gary i want you to say it's my name's uh nick dipshit or something you know yeah uh and we'll we'll put that up we'll say hey nick dipshit's here to fucking entertain us tonight and you can come on and prove how wrong we are nick dipshit yeah. you, the people don't even have to know it's you gary well, oh, now no. we'll have to come up with a new name because Nick Dipshit, they'll know now. I think we should just so. refer to Gary as Nick Dipshit from now on. Nick Dipshit. <laughs> Nick Dipshit in the chat. Hey, Nick Dipshit. Everybody, whenever you see Gary from now on, just call him Nick Dipshit. There we go. Nick uh, Dipshit. <laughs> I love uh, it. Illuminus Pooh for two dollars says that Jaws did that effect first. Yep. And then for five dollars says we are the Illuminati. We, the Illuminati, are not responsible for Donald Trump's presidency. That was totally Hydra. Um, I just want to know how America <laughs> managed to elect an orange to be their president. Uh, well, I mean, if you knew the true history of our politics, you'd know he's a Cheeto and not an orange. Uh, true. And we, we've elected many, many different forms of uh, <laughs> of, of, <laughs> of bag <snack>. chips. <laughs> yeah, of snack chips in the past. Oh, uh, um, Robert Williams for four dollars ninety nine says Juno went to Jupiter. Moons of Jupiter are named for the mistresses of Jupiter. Juno is Jupiter's wife. Juno went check in on her husband. Yes, absolutely. I did say a few things wrong. Um, I, I said that I got Uranus and Neptune the wrong way round, and I, I said solar eclipse when I meant to say lunar eclipse. So I do apologize, but I'm always happy to correct myself when I'm wrong. Um, Kibo Shell for seven dollars. Yeah, but, but still, but still, the solar eclipse is just in, uh, as inexplicable yeah. as the lunar eclipse is. Because I knew what you were talking about when you said lunar eclipse. You you really meant to say how did we get a shadow across yeah. the moon without you know the Earth being between the the light source and the moon? Uh, and even if the answer is oh well the light source is the moon, well then how does the shadow progress across the surface of the light source when we don't ever see that anywhere else? Magic. But regardless. The solar eclipse is just as inexplicable as the lunar eclipse is. Uh, they don't have an explanation for it. The The moon can't just go in front of the sun um, on a flat earth because they're at the same height. How do they, Why do they not hit each other? Why do we not see evidence of the moon passing directly in front of a, a heat source? You know, why do we not see like the the uh, the infrared that the moon heat up? And, and if it's that close to the sun and it passes in front of it, I mean, there's lots of reasons. Lots of shit that needs to be explained uh, for either eclipse. Um, Tanner in the chat says, um, Gary, sorry, mate. I couldn't see your message again. It's a shame you just got doxxed, though. See you next time, Nick Dipshit of Flatardia. <laughs> Gary is Nick Dipshit. Gary got that. doxxed. Gary <laughs> got doxxed. Nick Dipshit. Kibo Shell for $7.99 Australian. I'm in southeast Queensland, Australia. The clouds outside match that photo of Earth. Yeah. Anyone in Australia can do that anytime. Obviously not when it's night, but uh, anytime during the day, look at Himawari, look at the cloud patterns, go outside, they match. Um, DK Custom for two, two pounds says, I couldn't stuff this last two quid in the suitcase. Yeah, when I asked everyone to, um, to go and share my stuff on Facebook, he, uh, he said, oh, I was going to give you a suitcase of money, but I don't need to do that. But no, you can still give me the suitcase of money. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you know what? Just send me your Emmy. That'd be fine. Dick nip shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, DKT Justin, but you have one of the best moments in this community. I'm just polishing my Emmy. JM's face. <laughs> I will never forget it. <laughs> uh, better charge for two New Zealand dollars says that Uranus was discovered because I bent over. Thank you. Peter Must Prime for five dollars says, <laughs> sorry, but could you please stop pronouncing it your anus? It's Uranus. So triggered now. Sorry, yeah, Uranus, you're right. Um, Uranus oh, I thought he was going to say, it's your butthole. <laughs> it's your butthole. <clears throat> it's my butthole. Uh, then we've got Andrea Zeldich for 50 sex. How to pronounce Uranus without being rude in three easy steps. Then he's got a YouTube link. I'm sorry, I'll say Uranus from now on. I do apologize. 
Better charge for five New Zealand dollars says, if there is a dome up there, where does all the heat go? It would be pretty hot by now with a giant ball of fire in a snow globe. Yeah, I've asked that one several times. Um, also, what I've asked is, if the mountains are closer to the sun, why is there snow at the top of mountains? All right. <laughs> Um, why does it get colder as we get higher in elevation not hotter i know <laughs> you should be fucking boiling in an airplane better charge for two new zealand dollars says captain cook found new zealand for the british uh we read that one out thank you robert williams for four dollars 99 if you think that buzz is talking down to you it's because he is the man's 380 page doctoral dissertation from mit is available for download yeah buzz aldrin's a fucking smart dude um and him punching that guy is probably one of my favorite videos ever Oh yeah, Stephen Huxtable says four ninety nine. Can you play Buzz hitting that first guy, please? Team, do you want to find it and we'll play it? Yep. String news one for five dollars says I'm going on an expedition to the horizon. Who's with me? You're gonna keep going forever. <laughs> Diabetic war slug for ten dollars. Great show and Jordy was a nice change up. Yeah, Jordy was awesome. Jessica G for two dollars. A breath of hashtag fresh air is either a fart or I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you need fresh air. <laughs> um, rampant for a thousand claps. Could you guys explain Capuscular Rays again, please? It's just light coming through clouds and perspective. That's it. Um, Commander Darklight for 20 Australian says, No dumpster fire, and I had my toasting marshmallows out too. Maybe next time. Who knows? There's always flat earthers. Mike71 for $5. Sunset and sunrises in Australia in December prove the spherical earth. So does everything else. And the plot hole, the last one for $2. I like it when Batman says my channel name. The plot hole. Go and subscribe to the plot hole. Now. <laughs> Alright, here you go. Here's your video. Yeah, this is amazing. Oh. Look at him. You can tell he's getting angry. He's getting angry. Bart Seidel, I think, is his name. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I oh, love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, you could hear that, right? No. 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 God damn it. Did I bring it in on the wrong channel? I can hear myself. I can hear myself. Lord oh. and a liar. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Well. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Heard it then. Yeah. Heard it then. Yeah. And I sent it to the wrong, the wrong channel. Oopsie. I would have. Um, All right. I would have paid. You know, Buzz, whatever it cost him in court fines, I would have paid him it again to see him punch that dude another time. Like, honestly. <laughs> right. <laughs> a couple more super chats. Huge Arse for $5 Australian says, I love Huge Arse and I cannot lie. Let me say that properly. I love Hugh. Oh, get myself up on screen. Wait, hold on. I love Hugh Jars and I cannot lie. There you go. I know you wanted a clip. <laughs> uh, String News 1 for $5 says, Buzz became famous going to the moon. Buzz became a legend with the punch scene around the globe. Absolutely. Um, tonight's been a great show, guys. Um, over the next day or so, we'll uh, see both team and I release a Karen video. Um, I'm going to show you the thumbnail for mine right now. These are four of the worst male Karens I have ever come across. So, yeah, team. Um, let me see. Hold on, let me see. Gotta find your call. <laughs> oh, okay, the mail Karen. I like that. <laughs> yeah, um, these four guys. I mean, I'm going to be covering in my video, and the team's got a good Karen video coming out um, about the woman that came up with the Freedom to Breathe Agency. Um, yeah, Freedom to Breathe Agency. <laughs> uh, it's probably going to be Wednesday that I get it finished. Is that right, team? To release then? Yeah, I should be done with mine by awesome. Wednesday. 
Right, we're going to try and release ours at about the same time, give you something extra to watch. Um, I hope uh, anyone that watched earlier the Dungeons and Dragons stream, I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I know that that is a large departure from what my channel normally does. And I'm not going to be doing that on my channel um, too much. I'm just doing a few streams of it on my channel so that we can get some audience over to the Globers and Goblins channel um, that's joint owned between me, Conspiracy Cats, Brian, uh, Fashanti, Chrisma, uh, PhD Tony. It's going to be an equal thing. If it gets monetized, we'll share it equally and stuff. Um, uh, I'm going to be giving it a big rebrand with new graphics and stuff. And um, after every session, I'm going to do like a two or three minute animated what happened last time in the game. And if you do want to see the, the geekiness that is us playing Dungeons and Dragons, please go and subscribe to Globers and Goblins. Uh, but that is going to be everything for tonight. Team, thank you as always for coming here. Um, you you helped make the show excellent and I couldn't ask for a better business party. You're awesome. Yeah, sorry I wasn't on camera all night. I That's just, right. Uh, still no feeling a little face. bit under the weather, but I wanted. I, I was definitely involved the whole way through. Uh, it was a great conversation. Yeah. Um, I don't see uh, anything wrong with asking questions as long no. as you're receptive to the information being given to you, even if you don't agree with it. Just be receptive to it. At least acknowledge that somebody's making an effort to give you information, and he did. So absolutely. Uh, honestly, I appreciate that. I had a great time. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for super chatting. Uh, all the members, thank you for everyone that's liked the video and, and shared the video. I really do appreciate it. You guys are the real MVP. We're back soon, but remember, oh, yeah. stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight. The fight. Fight the flat. 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 F